ranked and unbeaten. They are unbeaten in their last 18 games, the last 14 in the Western Athletic Conference, 9-0 this year, under Paul Roach in his second year, a record of 19-3, and, and he is still, as head coach, unbeaten in the Western Athletic Conference. There's Paul. Many years in the NFL. It's said that John Madden and Red Miller are the two biggest influences on his coaching philosophy. Forty-two degrees at game time, and we'll be back to kick it off in Laramie in just a minute. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming, it's the Texas El Paso Miners versus the Wyoming Cowboys. Today's TFA game is sponsored by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. Magnavox, smart products for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. And by Toyota, there's quality. Who could ask for anything more? This was the scene at 7.20 this morning here in Laramie after last night a snowstorm hit and dropped a couple of inches. And people out here say the climate is perfect. We got here three days ago, the temperatures were tropical. All of a sudden you look outside your window last night and there was a blizzard. But look at it now, 42 degrees, very dry as you would expect here, sunny and cool and the wind will be a factor. And it's gusting above 20 miles per hour at times, blowing from left to right. Wyoming has won the toss. They have elected to receive, and so Chris Jackie, a legitimate All-American candidate as a kicker for UTEP, will be kicking off. Ted Gilmore, number 80, and number 24, Peter Gunn, are deep to receive for Wyoming as Jackie hits it with the wind at his back. High and deep. And taken by Gilmore halfway deep in the end zone, he will not return it. So on the touchback, Wyoming will have first and 10 at their 20. And, of course, Randy Welniak will lead him up. What a job he has done. He had rotator cuff surgery, and they thought he may never throw again. Dwayne Jones, the fullback, and Dabby Dawson averaging eight yards a carry at the running back. Sean Wiggins and Fred Doucette are the wide receivers. John Brassy, the tight end. John Brassy will also be sharing time with Tom Kilpatrick, number 16. You know, this is a high-powered offense, and they've been known to put the ball up on the very first play. And I wouldn't be surprised. Sometimes they do play they like to run a lot of counter. It's Peter Gunn, number 24, the long setback, and there's the counter fake and bootleg. Well, the act completes it to the tight end, Tom Kilpatrick. And they did run the counter bootleg on the first play for a gain of nine to the 29. They want to set the tone right away. They want to open the defense up and let them know that we will throw the ball despite the weather conditions and the wind here today. Let's take a look at the big guys up front. Grant Salisbury, perhaps their best all-around offensive lineman at center. Sean Weir and Tyrone Fitchie are the guards. The tackles, Tony Kapushin and Steve Slay, two big and good ones. Second and one, Wyoming at their 29. Peter Gunn with a good hold on a first down as he gets to the 35. Ross Purity made the tackle for the UTEP defense. And will check out the minors. Raymond Hill anchors the defensive line in the middle. Flanked by Jeb Mosley and Ross Purity, who made that tackle on gun. The outside players are Tony Tolbert at six foot six and Chris Riddick. Linebackers, Ken Solly and Doug Vernon Cooks and O.T. Thomas in the secondary. And the safeties are Richie Wright and one of the best in the country, Terry Walker. First and 10 Wyoming at their own 35. Gabby Dawson. Gets a block on the corner and makes good yardage across the 40 with the 42 before Ken Sali falls him down number 45 who will make a lot of tackles for UTEP. He's their leading tackler and Dabby Dawson may be the guy he's chasing a lot. Certainly and the emergence of Dabby Dawson as a real legitimate running threat has enabled the Cowboys to go from that all passing offense which they were earlier in the year to more of a balanced attack. When you look at their attack they throw about half the time and they run about half the time. It's a gain of seven for Dawson to the 42, second down and three. Three wide receivers to the right side of the formation for Wyoming. Melvin Wells in motion. Well, the act with time, he is an excellent runner. And he throws back and completes it for a short game. 
The catch made by Freddie Doucette, who was tackled immediately at the 45, and driven back, and Wellingak slow in getting up. And he was also holding his left arm. He took a pretty big hit after that play Wellingak did. You'll see his scrambling ability, the extra dimension that a coach wants in a quarterback. Watch him here. He can't find a receiver. Scrambles off to the right, throws back across the formation for the completion. Takes a hit right there. Came up holding his left arm. It's enough for a first down as Welniak remains in the game. And Wyoming has it at their own 45. 12.46 to go in the first quarter. No score. First possession of the game. Dawson with a lead blocker turns the corner and gets into UTEP territory at about the 48 before strong safety Terry Walker hauls him down. Another good gain on first down. Now you get an idea of why Dabby Dawson is averaging eight yards a carry. He has that quick darting style and his quickness allowed him to get outside right there for a good game. Dawson's carried twice for 14 yards. Paul Roach, as one might expect, the coach of the year in the WAC last year, and may be headed for yet another honor. As the Cowboys are undefeated. Second down and three. Dawson again. First down. Almost broke out of there, but got to the 41 in the grasp of Ross Purity, number 66. It's another Cowboy first down. A very important drive, not so much for Wyoming. They know they can put points on the board. It's certainly important for them as you watch Dabby here. Again, with good blocking up front, his offensive line, a good lead block by D. Wayne Jones, and then Dawson does the rest. But the defense of UTEP, this is such a high-scoring machine, the Wyoming offense, they can't get behind and play catch-up football. And they were concerned about that going into the game, Steve. This is one thing that the Cowboys have really done to most of their opponents this year. They've scored early and got the other team in a hole. They are driving here with another first down. As Welniak drops the pass, dumps it off, complete to the tight end, Gordy Wood. But there's a penalty marker on the play. Wood took it inside the 25, but it apparently is going to come back. And you're looking at a fairly sophisticated offense. You mentioned Paul Roach's association, and the play penalty is against Wyoming. Association with John Madden, he said that's where he learned offensive football when he was with the Raiders for those years with John Madden. Well, he certainly has implemented what he has learned well as the Cowboys lead the nation in total offense. Notre Dame with a big lead early as we bring you up to date on what else is happening in college football today. Promotion on the offense, still for down. Referee Tom Robinson telling us it was illegal motion. So it's still first down, but it's first and 15 now at the UTEP 46. Dawson and Dwayne Jones in the backfield behind Wellnia. And Doucette comes in motion. Good protection. And complete to Gilmore. Ted Gilmore with the reception inside the UTEP 35. It is not enough for a first down. Vernon Cooks, the right corner, made the tackle. If you take a look at Gilmore, it's a simple pattern where he goes down, he drives the back off, then he comes back to the ball. But this play was really made by Randy Welniak, who stayed in the pocket under pressure. He doesn't have a great arm, Welniak, but he delivered that ball right where it should be to tell Ted Gilmore. Welniak, three for three, as Gilmore goes wide to the right again. Second down, one yard to go. Fake to Peter Gunn on the counter. Welniak with lots of time looking deep. And it's complete and out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Freddie Doucette again. O.T. Thomas was right there. But Doucette with a big play and a first and goal, perhaps. This is the play that cornerbacks hate the worst. It's a post corner. O.T. Thomas was way off the receiver, Freddie Doucette. You can see how high the ball is thrown. There should be recovery time for the defensive back, but since he was so far off and he bit on the inside fake, he didn't have time to get back on that throw. It is first and goal just inside the 10-yard line. And Welniak with the completion to Doucette, perfect. Four for four so far. Down to Dawson. And Dabby, who has an interesting story regarding his nickname, gets a couple before Doug Martin and Thomas again bring him back. 
Second. What was Dabby saying about his nickname? That it, uh, his aunt or his grandmother said uh, it was a time when the Brill Cream commercial was very popular. A little dab will do you. Apparently Dabby was fairly tiny and they used to call him a little dab and then they shortened it to Dabby. <laughs> He's not too big now. Paul Roach looking on as is Bob Stull and the Cowboys putting the pressure on early as they like to do. Second down and goal. At about the eight yard line. Well, he had tipped incomplete in the end zone intended again for Freddie Doucette O.T. Thomas number 15 got a hand on the ball so it'll be third and goal that's the first incompletion well the act is thrown Cowboys are not only moving the football they're controlling the clock this is the 11th play in this drive and there are nine minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter. UTEP has yet to touch the football. Third down and goal from the eight. Well, the action run. Still looking into the end zone and now throwing it. Touchdown! A tipped pass caught by Doucette, and it's six to nothing Wyoming. It appeared as if Dabby Dawson got a hand on the ball and went off Dawson and Doucette by himself in the back of the end zone, hauled it in for the touchdown. And here's Sean Fleming, who has hit 48 out of 48 extra points this year to attempt yet another one. 49 in a row. And it's 7-0 Wyoming with 9.27 to go in the first quarter. Freddie Doucette with a touchdown reception. And the reason this worked, if you watched number 37, the linebacker for UTEP, but watch the move right here. See him get away, and now this evasive move gives him time, throws the ball. It's tipped by Dawson, and to set alertly and luckily in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Boy, well, Wellniak took a shot after he got that pass away. He never saw the touchdown completion, but he'll take it as Doug Morgan was chasing him. But he got it away in time. We'll be back to Laramie with Wyoming leading by seven. Wyoming following their normal pattern, taking the early lead, leading seven to nothing. And to illustrate that point, they have scored first in eight of the ten games now played this year, counting today. Sean Fleming kickoff, number two, Kevin Caldwell, and number four, Clarence C.A. back for UTEP. Into the wind, a low line drive kick. Caldwell looking for an opening. Couple of great moves. Still going across the 30. Finally hauled down at about the 45. Lee Carter, number 40, hauled him down. A 42-yard return by freshman Kevin Caldwell. What movement by Kevin Caldwell, the freshman, 6'1", 195 pounds. Watch him right here. Bounces off some people, then makes some beautiful moves. And watch this one, right there, grabbing air. Caldwell gives UTEP great field position. The question regarding the health of running back John Harvey answered for the moment as he is in there at tailback and gets a fake pitch from Hegarty, who's looking long to throw. And it's incomplete, intended for Barrett, Reggie Barrett, downfield deep. But there is a penalty at the line of scrimmage. And the preliminary indication is holding against UTEP. So Hegarty trying to go deep on the first play to Reggie Barrett overthrows him. But the play would have come back anyway as referee Tom Robinson explains the option to Wyoming. And here's the call. Holding on the offense, still first down. Holding the call against the Miners. So that'll move the ball back to the 35. Pat Hegarty, a quarterback. He has done a terrific job transferring from a California junior college. John Harvey starting with a bad ankle. Dixon, the fullback. C.A. and Barrett, two excellent wide receivers. And 260-pound Arnie Atkinson, the tight end. Harvey trying to get outside. Picks up short yardage before he is bumped out of bounds by Eric Coleman. James Spady 
anchoring the offensive line in the middle. Robert Pufal and Sean Kruger, who also do a good stand-up comedy routine, are the guards. And the tackle, Steve Casper and Dean Whittles. It's second down and 16, the ball at the 39 of Texas El Paso. 7-0 Wyoming in the first quarter. Hegarty with time, now he runs out of there. Not known as a runner, he breaks the tackle and gets out to about the 47. Good coverage in the secondary by Wyoming. And they finally got to him, and Pat Raybould brought him down after a gain of about eight. It's Raybould and Greg Schlichting in this four-man front. Mitch Donahue and Dave Adeen, whom the pros are looking at. The middle linebacker is Steve Addison, flanked by Mike Shenbeck and Willie Wright. Coleman and McMillan are the corners, and Miller and Harris the safeties. Third down, eight yards to go, Utah. Lots of time for Hegarty, incomplete. It was intended for Ross Hausler to tie it in, and Hausler tried to turn back for the ball, but couldn't. He was covered by Mike Schenbeck, and it'll be fourth and eight, and the kicking team comes on. Lance Brownlee averaging 41 yards a kick for the Miners. Ready to boot it away, and Freddie Doucette in single safety. Wyoming has 10 men along the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they bring them all. They have a return on. A good high kick. Doucette fakes the fair catch, and the ball lands in the end zone for the touchback. So it'll be first and 10 Wyoming on a 53-yard punt by Brownlee. Seven to nothing, Wyoming with 8.13 left to go in the first quarter. College football on CBS in Laramie, Wyoming. Steve Zabriskie along with John Dockery and the person who is the most happy that it quits snowing is on the sideline. Leslie Visser. And we'll join Leslie in just a minute. Wyoming has a first and 10 at their own 20, leading 7-0 with 8.13 to go in the first quarter. Randy Welniak leads him up. Gabby Dawson alone set back. Dawson with the ball. And he picks up about four to the 24 to the second and six. Doug Morgan on the tackle. Let's go down and see how Leslie's doing on the sideline. Leslie? <laughs> I'm here with Cowboy Joe Steve. This is the Shetland Pony who runs around the stadium after every score. With such a high-powered offense, doesn't he get exhausted? Not near as tired as we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that this horse has run more this year than Ali Sheba. Back to you, Steve. <laughs> Maybe not as fast, but farther. <laughs> Cowboy Joe's <laughs> got the short wheels, too. <laughs> He's already off and running today. That's right. <laughs> already had one trip. The way these guys score, that horse is in shape. Second down and six. Wyoming at the 24. Welniak running it up and gets a yard to the 25 before he's tripped up there. Sean Schulte, number 97, the nose guard, got a hold of him. And we'll continue to bring you up to date on the rest of college football around the country today. Third down and five yards to go. Notre Dame continues to roll, huh? Number one team in the country. Showdown with USC down the road. It's not over yet. Ooh. Some big games left. But as far as the folks in the WAC are concerned, none bigger than the one here today. Third and five. Lots of time for Welniak, but it finally diminishes. He is caught from behind by Chris Riddick. A senior out of El Paso. And UTEP again did a good job covering in the secondary. They did a good job covering. The offensive line gave Welniak a lot of time. Just count this. Three and a half, four and a half before Riddick finally comes from the back. And that's a play that a quarterback can get hurt on. Never saw Riddick hit in the back. So on fourth down and seven. Vernon Cooks will watch it roll at about the 40-yard line of UTEP. And the wind is a factor right there. So you can see how low he kicked that ball because he was kicking into the wind. If you hang it up, it just comes back at you. So he kept it low, and it eventually rolled out of bounds. Well, Kilpatrick, a 37-yard punt, and he, of course, ought to know how to do it around here because the wind blows most of the time. 
And with no return, that's not a bad net punt of 37. First and 10, UTEP at their own 40. It's 7 to nothing, Wyoming. Pat Hegarty with a pitch. John Harvey and Harvey going nowhere. What a play by Rich Miller, the safety who came up for run support. He was the WAC Defensive Player of the Week last week and actually earned this starting job over George Dozier by his performance and made another big play there. Certainly did. And uh, UTEP, we haven't talked too much about it, but what an incredible turnaround Bob Stull has. In his third year, two decades of disaster, he comes in, turns them around. They're eating more now, battling for a shot at the WAC championship. And he's got them believing that they can win. Harvey again. Getting outside and crossing 45 before he's down. Inbounds. 47, Steve McMillan, the cornerback, made the tackle. And this will illustrate what you were talking about, Doc. When was the last time you saw a team go from 4 and 8 to 8 and 1 in just two years? And before that, the UTEP program was just in a shambles. I mean, decades just of uh, six coaches in 13 years over a, over a, from 72 to 85, Steve. So Bob Stull is bringing stability and continuity in organizations to UTEP. And in those 11 seasons, 75 to 85, UTEP won a total of 15 games. On third down, Hegarty over the middle, incomplete. Shen back with an outstanding defensive play. Intended for the tight end, Rob Hausler. But Shen back batted it away at the last second, and he'll be fourth down. Look at some of the coaches that have come through. I mean, some, some Devaney, Devaney, just some of the big names that have come through and continued their careers, often a stepping stone to bigger jobs. Lance Brownlee to punt again. He's got the wind at his back still. And he hit one 52 yards last time. This one will not go that far as it's end over end. And Doucette watches it bounce at the 20. And it's downed just inside the 20 by Tom Costello. They'll mark it right at the 20 yard line. 437 left to go in the first. A 34 yard punt. We'll be right back. Regardless of what number Wyoming players wear on the back of their jerseys, on the back of their helmets, there is a number 56 in a black circle. That is a memorial to a young man named David Shutt, who played linebacker here at Wyoming and was tragically killed just this last July in a train accident. David was extremely well thought of by all of his teammates, the coaches, and everybody in Laramie. His jersey has been the only jersey yet to be retired here in Wyoming. And as the Cowboy players leave the locker room, they touch his number over the door, and they take that number with them on the road and do it all before every game. Part of the reason the Cowboys are playing with such intensity is the memory of David Shutt. First and 10, Wyoming at their own 20. They lead 7 to nothing. Peter Gunn. Good blocked on the corner and gone to about the 28 before he's hauled down by Terry Walker, the strong safety. And Peter Gunn is, did something there that he shouldn't do. Any, uh, you know, Pop Warner football player learns to carry the ball away from the inside. The ball should be in the other arm so that his inside arm is free to ward off the tacklers. That's where they're coming from. He wants to use a straight arm. And it also protects the ball away from fumble. So Peter Gunn... Uh, little something he might learn there, carrying the ball. Wyoming with 96 yards, almost to the century mark. We're still in the first quarter. And UTEP has had the ball for just over about a minute offensively. Gun again. Has the first down, breaks the tackle, and is near the 40 before he's driven out of bounds. Great second effort by Gunn, who is probably just as quick and fast as Dawson but a little bit bigger and stronger. He is, and he's, he's a fine runner, and maybe I shouldn't send pointers his direction. That time he just lowered his shoulder and banged away a tackle, ran over a tackle for some extra yards. Wyoming very deep in the backfield, and lots of talent at all the skilled positions. But UTEP feels that as far as skilled positions are concerned, they match up pretty well with Wyoming. Mark Timmer, number 48, in the game at fullback, along with Gunn. First and 10. It's Timmer on the carry, looking for a hole. Struggling forward to about the 45, a gain of five or six before Jeb Mosley, number 95, the senior defensive tackle, brings him down. 
And what a story to coach is Paul Roach. Two years ago, at a time when he thought the head coaching jobs had passed him long by, there was a situation here where Erickson left to go up to uh, Washington State. Paul Roach was... These trustees said they wanted Paul Roach to come in here. He was forced to take the job at the ripe old age of 59. Now he's 61. And what he's done here, you see some of the coaches that have come through this program. Devaney, Akers, Guy, Erickson, the man I mentioned, who went up to Washington State. Paul Roach probably will end his coaching career here. Kilpatrick with a catch. Out of bounds in UTEP territory just inside the 45. Chris Riddick bumped him out. But the completion to the tight end gets Wyoming yet another first down. And a lot of people talk about a head coach at age 61, and we saw him yesterday, energetic, enthusiastic. I think part of it is his nature, and part of it is sort of a defensive posture that at this age, I better show people that I do have enough energy and verve to be a head coach. And it's, as we know, it's very, very demanding. And he also wears another hat, Steve. He's the athletic director as well. Some of the players call him Gramps, not necessarily to his face, but they do it in a pleasant, not demeaning manner. Dwayne Jones and Dabby Dawson back in the backfield for Wyoming on first and ten. Fake to Dawson. Welniak with lots of time and a completion. John Brissi, the tight end, bumped out of bounds inside the 40. They'll mark it at about the 38. Chris Riddick had some pressure on Wilniak, but he didn't get there in time. What are your army, armies having six straight? We'll continue with the CBS Sports Wire, bringing you up to date all afternoon. Big games abound. With Houston all over Texas at halftime. Longhorns are down. Elsewhere, Bob Stull in the Lone Star State has the Miners up at 8-1, but they're... Watching Wyoming control the football and the game so far. It means 7 0. Well, the act completes it inside the 25 to Gilmore. And Gilmore holds down by Ken Sali. But not before Wyoming has another first down and moves closer into scoring territory. Randy Welniak does not have the strongest arm in college football, but his accuracy is uncanny. He throws his ball to Gilmore. See, one, two, three, four defenders all around Gilmore. He puts the ball right where it should be for the completion. Ted Gilmore, a junior from Wichita, Kansas. With a good job of running after he caught the ball. Two and a half minutes remain in the first quarter. First and 10 Wyoming at the UTEP 22. Randy Dawson. Breaking off tackle. Breaking it off tackle. Touchdown. A 22-yard touchdown run by Dawson. And John Brazee, number 84, the tight end, with a big block to spring him. It's 13 to nothing, Wyoming. Sean Fleming to attempt another extra point. His 50th consecutive of the year. And the freshman holds the new Wyoming school record for consecutive extra points. You know, Davy Dawson has only started three games for Wyoming. They said he was tentative, didn't know what he was doing, until one day he just decided to let his talent play. And right here, you see some of that talent. He bounces off tacklers, breaks another tackle, and takes it in for the score. Dawson came into the game averaging eight yards per carry. He has carried six times and picked up 49 yards. Two minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Wyoming doing what they do so well, get the other team down early. And you know, Dabby would remind you a little of his buddy, Barry Sanders. Of course, they both went to high school, opposing high schools, and, and they're good friends. Uh, Barry Sanders uh, averaging over 200 yards leading the country, but Dabby and he were kind of friendly rivals, and they're still friends and, and talk to one another. Let's go down on the field to Leslie Visser. Leslie? Steve, I spoke with Coach Bob Stull right before kickoff, and he said that if the wind stays the way it is now, it won't be a problem, but that if it gets any stronger, it'll cause havoc with his kicking game. Of course, Paul Roach thinks this, thinks this is a slight breeze. <laughs> it's all in your perspective, right, Leslie? 
And they play here all the time, so they're more used to it. It is blowing pretty strongly, near 25 miles an hour, and so Fleming will kick into that wind. Clarence C.A., number four, and Ricky Lopez, number eight, back to receive the kickoff. Lopez waits for it at the four-yard line. Across the 20 to about the 21. And Texas El Paso will go on offense. Dabby Dawson with a 22-yard run culminating a seven-play, 80-yard drive, and Wyoming leading 14 to nothing. And you have to be impressed. You see a seven-play, 80-yard drive, before that an 11-play, 80-yard drive, and a balanced attack, something that Paul Roach talked about beforehand. Throwing the ball well, Niax throwing it well, and Dawson comes back. Look at his rushing stats. Six carries for 49 yards. So far, the rushing and passing yard is just about equal. First and 10, UTEP, just outside their 20. Hegarty to throw, and he completes it to Barrett. Reggie Barrett with a good catch and a good first down gain of about seven. And Reggie Barrett is really the thoroughbred receiver on this UTEP offense. 6'2", 198, a sophomore, comes from good breeding, too. He had three brothers that played in the NFL. Oliver out of TC, TSU, played with the Oilers, his brother David a fullback, played with Tampa, and a tight end by the name Joe went to Baylor. He played with the Raiders. So there's good breeding stock there with Ricky Barrett. Second down and three. Eddie Dixon, the fullback, trying to get away, and he cannot. David Adine, right there to wrap him up. David Adine leads the Cowboys with nine sacks and is one of a couple of players that pro scouts are looking at quite closely on the Cowboy team. And it's interesting, you saw him play that run so well. That's one of his weaknesses. He's an outstanding pass rusher, but the pros would like him to become a little tougher against the run. There he showed you he can play the one run as well. He held Dixon to a loss of one, so it is third down and four. UTEP at their own 27. Haggerty with time, but nobody open. Dives and loses the football. They're going to call it down. No fumble as the ball will be marked at the at the UTEP 32. The official ruling that the ground caused the fumble. And Haggerty will be ruled down at the 32. But it may not be enough for the first down. Take a look at it. Yes, it is. He reaches out with the ball. And what the official called, he said the ball, as it hit the ground, came loose, that it wasn't loose before that. Hegarty is smart play reaching out to get it, but it almost cost him. And he just barely got it, so it's first and 10 at the 32. That's their first, first down. Dixon takes the pitch. Dixon, like a bowling ball, rolled out of bounds at the 36. Eddie Dixon out of Georgia at 5'8", but 205 pounds. And if we look at Eddie Dixon, he is that small bowling ball type. In high school, in Georgia, he had 7,000 yards rushing. Broke Herschel Walker's state rushing record. Impressive stats in high school. Good player here for Utah. Does not carry the ball as much as do the tailbacks. But he picked up five, so it's second and five. He's at Quick toss and a completion. Barrett breaks two tackles and gets into Wyoming territory near the 45 before he's brought down in the secondary by free safety Daryl Harris. He talked to Hegarty yesterday, and we mentioned Richie Barrett's name, and his eyes lit up. A big smile came to his face, and this is one of the reasons. Hegarty is distracted. He's in the lane. There are defenders all around him, yet he keeps his concentration and makes the catch. I'll tell you what they think of Reggie Barrett. They gave up signing a recruit in Houston to go down to Corpus Christi and be sure they got Barrett. They didn't mind losing the other guy as much as they would have had they lost Barrett. So they got Reggie. He is a good one. Tipped and caught. Ricky Lopez with a reception of a tipped pass inside the 30 for another UTEP first down. And little Ricky, only 5'7 and 150 pounds. And you get a sense now that UTEP is getting some of their offensive rhythm, and they have to. They're down 14-0. This ball is tipped. What concentration by Ricky when a ball is diverted from his path to catch it like that on your fingertips. Excellent concentration. Just 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and look what the Cowboys have done in the first quarter so far this year, leading 14-0 here. And they continue that trend, absolutely. First and 10, UTEP. 
Eddie Dixon with a block. But no help outside. Three Wyoming Cowboys right there, led by Mike Shinbeck, number 55. Time has expired. That's the end of the first quarter here in Laramie with the score. The Cowboys 14 and the Miners nothing. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station. Vistas such as this abound in the high country, especially with the blanket of snow that drifted in here overnight as War Memorial Stadium is almost filled to capacity. Wyoming leading UTEP 14 to nothing as we get ready for the second quarter. And when this stadium is filled to capacity, as I said in the opening, it can be considered the third largest city in the state behind Cheyenne and Casper. <laughs> you know, that's the way I was at Penn State West Virginia last week, and that's the way it was in West Virginia. That became the second largest population center in the state of West Virginia. They love their cowboy, but it's the Myers of UTEP on the march. Second down and 12 as we start the second quarter. Hegarty swings it out to John Harvey, and Harvey has room and gets it inside the 20 before he is bumped out of bounds by with the number 12, Harvey. Harris. Harris. Out of John Harvey doesn't quite look like himself. He's walking a little gingerly, running a little gingerly. He's coming off that ankle injury. And remember, Steve, when we asked him yesterday how far along you were, he said, what, 85, 90% or so. So they'd like to get some life in this offense from John Harvey, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it today. He is the all-time offensive leader for Utah, but he has had two ankles, both ankles injured. One of them twice, and an injured knee already this year. His right ankle, very sore. But it's Harvey again, looking for room and finding none. Maybe a gain of a yard on the play, and very close to the first down, as it was third and about a yard and a half to go. To give you an idea of how good John Harvey was, or is, coming into the season, he needed just 13 touchdowns to become the NCAA career leader in touchdowns. That record held by Tony Dorsett. Not a bad back. <laughs> Not at all. What a career Dorsett had. And like Dorsett, Harvey a four-year player. And you just about have to be to run up those kind of numbers. As you see, the measurement as Harvey picked up just enough for the minor first down. You watch the replay and the surge of the offensive line. Harvey behind the lead block. And that extra effort somewhere in that pile is the first down. And, you know, we're talking about John Harvey. He needs just four touchdowns to break that record. Harvey out of there now on first and ten. The ball at the Wyoming 17. Wyoming leading 14 to nothing here early in the second quarter. Dixon the long setback behind Hegarty. And it's Dixon with the ball. But he can't get away. Number 49, Mitch Donahue, the left defensive end, ran him down from behind. You look at Mitch Donahue, and he may be the most talented defensive lineman they've ever had here. Take a look at number 49. Watch his speed and quickness coming from the backside to catch a runner from the opposite side. He's only a sophomore. And you talk to him, and he talks about his hero, Leroy Selman, and the fact that someday he might like to play pro ball the way Leroy did in Tampa Bay. Those are fine aspirations of some of one of the best. Loss of three, second and 13. Hegarty under pressure, gets it away, incomplete. The ball was almost intercepted, then almost caught. Daryl Harris had the coverage. The tight end, Rob Hausler, almost came up with it after Harris tipped it. The problem that they're having is the rush. Watch the defensive pressure on the quarterback, Hegarty. There, the ball almost tipped, almost come up with it. Harris almost kicked. Take a look again. Defensive back, it's go balls up in the air. Harris almost holds it, can't hold it for the interception. Look at that. Heartbreak. Come on, I had it. <laughs> <laughs> he almost had it twice, and Hauser almost had it. Shenbeck was putting the pressure on Hegarty. Now the pressure's really on Hegarty. Third and 13. Three wide receivers to the right for Utah. From the Wyoming 20 under pressure. Whistles and play is stopped as apparently UTEP did not get the playoff in time. We'll see what Tom Robinson says. It is a dead ball foul for delay of game. They didn't get it off in time. And now it's going to be third and 18 if, well, it's a dead ball foul, so there won't be any option. Bob Stull argued, excuse me, Steve, Bob Stull argued his case a little bit there, but uh, to no avail. The crowd here, we talked about it earlier, near capacity. 
till third down. Near capacity at 31,000 people coming from, some people driving seven, eight hours across the state to see Wyoming. And you talk about what it means to the state, and people will tell you, you know, we've gone through the boom, the energy boom, and now we've gone through the energy bust. And to have an undefeated team ranked 10th in the country is something very special. Gives us something to look forward to on a Saturday afternoon. And a team strike trying to stay undefeated. It is now third and 18 for the Miners. Complete and almost intercepted by Schenbeck. The pass again intended for the tight end Rob Hausler. But Mike Schenbeck right there. And it'll be fourth down at the 25 of Wyoming. So Chris Jackie, who has made 17 of 19 field goals, leading the nation in percentage, his longest this year, 56 yards. So he's got plenty of leg. This will be a 42-yard attempt into about a 25 or 30 mile an hour win. And as you can see, he leads the nation among kickers in scoring. A 42 yarder into the wind, and it is good. UTEP is on the board with 13.33. Left to go in the first half. It's now Wyoming 14 and the University of Texas at El Paso 3. This is Jim Nance in New York. Uh, number one, Notre Dame steamed rice today. But one thing the Owls could hoot about, according to the NCAA, this is the first two-point return off a conversion attempt in Division I football. Rice scoring two off the play, but Notre Dame the clear winner. Let's go back to Stephen John. Thanks a lot. The Irish rolling again. And Jim Nance will be along periodically to keep you up to date on what's happening elsewhere. Chris Jackie set to kick off. Peter Gunn and Ted Gilmore back inside the five to receive for Wyoming. And it was Jackie's 42-yard field goal into the wind and put the Miners on the scoreboard. 14 to three Wyoming early in the second quarter. Now Jackie will have to kick off against that win. Line drive. Gilmore at about the one-yard line. Looking for a block, he gets about to the 22 or 23 before he's hauled down there. We're in Laramie, Wyoming. Steve Zabriskie, John Dockery, and Leslie Visser in what appears to be a sold-out War Memorial Stadium. 14 to 3, Wyoming leading and an 89-yard pass day so far for Welniak. And Jackie's 42-yard field goal, the only scoring for UTEP. And 168 yards, Doc, of offense, and we're early in the second quarter for Wyoming. They're going 400 yards a game, so they're on track. And Randy Welniak is 8 of 9. He's only not completed one pass, so he's having a terrific afternoon. He's going to throw again. On first and 10, and he's throwing long, but it's incomplete. Intended for Ted Gilmore, and O.T. Thomas, the freshman out of Lubbock, was back there defending on the play, so it'll be second and ten. UTEP needs to get something going defensively. And when you ask their coordinator, he says, well, I have to use a cliche. We're a bend but don't break defense. We are a burglar defense. They may get some things on us for a while, but sooner or later, we're going to take something away. And when you look at them, Steve, they are plus 17 in the takeaway giveaway category, so they're taking away a lot more than they're giving away. They're among the nation's leaders in turnover ratio. They're giving up 400 yards a game, but less than 20 points a game. Second down and 10. Danby Dawson has a little bit of help. Breaks the tackle at the 40. O.T. Thomas, the last man, gets him at the 41 of UTEP. Tyrone Fitchy, number 68, was leading the way around the corner for Dawson. And that's all the little dab needed. All the little dab, a little dab will do you. There's the big man in front. All 280 pounds of him didn't get much of a block. Dabby did most of it on his own, though he did wait for Fitchy. But he didn't do much. A 36-yard run by Dawson. And here's what Dabby's done. What a month of October, huh? <laughs> Boy, look at that. Almost 10 yards of carry. And Dabby overall on the year, averaging 8 yards of carry. 85 yards so far today. First and 10. Wyoming now at the UTEP 41. Peter Gunn cutting it back inside and met there by number 37, Doug Morgan. 
Good play by Morgan as he penetrated, and Gunn stopped right at the line of scrimmage, maybe even lost a half a yard. And again, we continue to bring you up to date on what else is going on and has happened today. Well, we know today gets better and better, don't they, each week. But they have a couple of pitfalls. Penn State not having much of a year. Still has to play Notre Dame. But who knows? Joe Paterno has been known to get his team up and upset some people. And then there's, of course, USC. Well, the Irish winning big, so they have a great shot at retaining that number one ranking. Welding out with lots of time and wide open. Number 88, Freddie Ducet, all alone. Over here in the near flat. Run out of bounds by Vernon Cooks. But it's a Wyoming first down. Just outside the 25. Let's go, And the market right out the 25. Bob Stoll beside himself. And Mike Church, the defensive coordinator, saying, come on, guys, what's happening? He's the man who talked about the bend but don't break. Right now, they've been breaking, and the man that's been doing it to them has been Randy Wellman. He has now hit Freddie Doucette four times for a total of 50 yards. Danny Dawson finding that seam and cutting back fumbles. It looks like Wyoming recovered at the 19. As Dawson lost it before he went down. And it looked like Steve Slay, 290 pounder, who fell on the ball. Take a look right side of your screen. You see Dawson making the cut upfield. The hit right there, and it appeared as though the ball were out before he went down. They mark it just inside the 20, where it'll be second down and five yards to go. If we had instant replay in college, I think we might have some conversation about that last play. Ball seems to come out when the defender hits the ball. Well, now asking for quiet as the opposing sides answer back to Air Force Memorial Stadium. And Dawson has a first down inside the 15, taking the swing pass. And Chris Riddick, the defensive end, has brought him down. And Jabby is a guy that is not quick to tell you his first real name. Very few people know it, but we were, uh, in our investigative approach <laughs> to this game, we found out his real name is Kenneth and when, Dabby Dawson. And when he finds out that you've told the entire country, he will not be happy with you, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's Kenneth, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> What's wrong with Kenneth? That's a nice name. It's my father's name. <laughs> I like the name. So do I. <laughs> Dabby prefers Dabby. First and 10, Wyoming at the UTEP 14. Weldingak passing again, incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Gordy Wood. And he was covered by Richie Wright, the free safety. And we talked about this offense, ranked third in the country with 45.3 points per game. That's third to Oklahoma State with 48 points, Nebraska with 45.4. So they can put points. Look at those rankings. Total yards, tops in the country, 539 per game. They are rolling up some more today. Threatening again. Second down and 10. Still at the 14 of UTEP. Quarterback draw by Wellman. And he's down near the 5. He gains about 8 where it will be third down and 2. And that is a play by design to take advantage of his great running ability. He came here as a wishbone quarterback, and they do take advantage of it, and this will drive a defense crazy because you're backing up, you're trying to play pass coverage. All of a sudden, the quarterback comes on the draw. Bob Greasy used to do that against the Jets and us all the time and drive us crazy. It's something you really can't defend against. A lot of teams in the WAC have tried it. They've tried dropping eight and nine guys off because of the passing attack, and then Welniak eats them for lunch because he avoids the two or three that are left as rushers. Third down and two. Jones, a fullback, hammered as he gets near the first down marker and pushed back. So we'll see where they spot the ball. It was close. Chris Riddick and Thomas Bradley, among others, met him just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. It's not enough for the first down. So it's going to be fourth down and just a matter of a foot or so to go. Did you see Joe Tiller and Paul Roach there talking? I think they're going to go for it. 
I think they are too, and I think that's what Paul Roach was saying. Fourth down and a foot, the ball inside the five of UTEP. And the goal line offense on for Wyoming. Well, the act tried to sneak, but he lost the snap. He lost the snap and then lost his footing and was unable to move forward to any great degree. So it will all depend on where the ball is spotted as to whether or not Wyoming picks up the first down. And referee Tom Robinson wants to take a look at it. I like the decision by Roach because the way his defense is played. And it is a Wyoming first down. Even if they had not made it, he's got UTEP backed up. I happen to agree with you, and he has confidence in the running ability of his quarterback. So it's a simple sneak, and Salisbury is leading it, and he may be the best offensive lineman in the center. The ball, there seems to be a little bit of a juggle. You can't see it there, but he did get the first down. He only needed about a foot, and apparently the surge of the offensive line gave it to him. So it's first and goal, Wyoming at the three. Peter Gunn stood up as he reached the line of scrimmage and shoved back, maybe gained a little bit. Thomas Bradley again was there and will be second and goal. You know, Steve, you mentioned Paul Roach going for it. When you look at his offensive line, sometimes people think of the WAC as having, you know, so much passing that the offensive line may be smaller. Well, it's not. This offensive line averages somewhere around 280 pounds. So they do have surge. Well, act looking into the end zone. Pressured now and hauled down at the five for a loss. Sean Schulte, number 97, and number 53, Rob Sessage, also in there. You get a sense of what kind of quarterback Wilniak is. Look at how cool he is. Look at his body language, a little fake, stands there, stands there, feels the pressure, still trying to look downfield before he's brought down. So now it's third and goal, back at the five-yard line, as the Miners are responding to the challenge. And with seven and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. Three wideouts to the right. Well, Nant tries to draw again, spinning, but getting only back to the original line of scrimmage. He was hit twice, and Tony Tobert, number 98, Terry Walker, number nine, both there. Watch what they try to do here. Paul Roach tries to get all of his firepower to one side. He puts a man in motion, and then they say, well, we'll spread the defense out, and then we'll run the quarterback up the gut on the sneak. No dice. UTEP was expecting. So on fourth down, the field goal unit is on. Sean Fleming will attempt a 21-yarder, and it almost blocked, but he gets it away, and it's good. 6.41 remaining in the second quarter. The Miners hold, but they give up the field goal, and Wyoming leads 17 to 3. One of Texas El Paso's finest players, Don Maynard, played from 1954 to 56 at what was then Texas Western. Maynard went on to a stellar career with the New York Jets, hooking up with Joe Namath and John Dockery on that Super Bowl three team. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame last year. He's a financial consultant in El Paso, and he likes what's happening in his alma mater. Actually, uh, they've always said that offense draws crowds and defense will win you championships, and I think that's the case here. They keep gelling together better and better, and I think without a doubt, uh, they, they'll do all right. A lot of people don't know what made Don Maynard so good. He built his confidence running patterns against me in practice all the time. <laughs> you, you sent him right into the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Did you know? Boy, could he run. 9-4, 25 years ago. He was a burner. Ricky Lopez fumbles it and then falls down to five, and he's going to be down there. He got up and ran, but he cannot. And UTEP backed up at their own five-yard line, trailing by 14. Take a look at what happens here. He fumbles the ball, then picks it up, has possession, and then goes down. His knees touch the ground, so the 
the official marked it right there, just at the five-yard line. You know, I think Don Maynard put his finger on something about the UTEP turnaround. One of the things that Bob Stahl did, he brought exciting football to El Paso. Tough to be wide open and exciting when you're at your own five, however. We'll see what Hegarty does. He gives it to John Harvey, and Harvey gains about three out to the eight, where it'll be second down and seven. Craig Schlichting on the tackle. Let's go down again to Leslie Bisser. Hi, I'm here with Jim Paul, longtime booster of UTEP football. You followed it for 40 years. What's Bob Stahl done to turn the program around? Well, I think he took a program that had a lot of potential in the city, had a lot of potential, and made them believers. The team, the city, and everybody's excited about football in El Paso now. You are a double-A baseball team down in El Paso, and you've done a lot of promotions. What have you done for minor football? Well, we had a couple of promotions last year. We brought the chicken in. We had some firework displays, but nothing beats winning. You know that. Oh, that's great. Back upstairs. Thanks, Leslie. Second down. Hegarty under pressure gets it away. He was being tackled as he threw the football. It was intended for Victor Bailey, but David Adine was all over him as he went to release the ball. You use that term loosely. He was being necktied. He got a clothesline. Almost took his head off on that, David Adin did. Take a look at this again. Watch Adin, number 99, coming from the right side of your screen. Haggerty staying in there. See that? Oh. It's no wonder the pass was incomplete. Third down and six. Haggerty fumbles the snap. Harvey picked it up, but he's dropped immediately. No, Wyoming has it. Harvey had a chance, but it was Mike Schenbeck who took the ball away from him. A problem with the exchange. I don't think Hegarty, Hegarty ever really had control of that ball. Let's take a look. The ball is already bouncing around. Harvey had a chance, but he bumps into one of his own men, and then Wyoming comes up with the recovery. Mike Schenbeck with the recovery, and it is first and goal, Wyoming. This has not gone the way Bob Stahl had hoped. He talked a lot about falling behind early. And now the turnover gives Wyoming the ball at the UTEP 7. And now time is called. Welniak came up to the line of scrimmage and asked for a timeout. A reminder coming up at halftime of our college football today, the Prudential Halftime Report. Jim Nance and Aaron Parsegian in New York bringing you up to date on all the scores and highlights from around the country. And we'll uh, give you a little update as well. Alabama, look at that, 12, nothing over LSU. West Virginia continues to roll 41-13. They're a powerhouse. Major Harris is a big-time quarterback. Nebraska, ooh, rolling over. And those Auburn Tigers of Pat Dye. Auburn had three straight shutouts coming into this game. They have another one right now. Arkansas looking for the Cotton Bowl. What a defense Auburn has. They are allowing opponents under seven points a game. Of course, Casey Rocker isn't a bad player either. No. Maybe one of the best defensive players in the country. Uh, Pat Dye has had that program going for a while. Wyoming has made their decisions. First and goal at the seven. Following the timeout. Steve Benna in the backfield along with Dabby Austin. Benna, who's been troubled by injuries, takes the handoff. And he's hauled down immediately. You know, this is a little strange. How often do you see a five-yard line marker? You know, I asked everybody around here. Very few people knew what it was about. Finally, I asked the SID and said, well, we just wanted to be a little different. So we put a five-yard at the five-yard line, a five at the five-yard line. Well, you know, it used to be that you'd see fields that had 35, 25, 45, all those numbers on there. Here they have just 10, 20, 30, and then the five. Because it helps you when you're down there. Well, the act with a completion for short yardage to Debbie Dawson at about the four-yard line. But Wyoming's still short. And you see Paul Roach, he wants a timeout. He wants to make the decision with third and goal at the four. So the second timeout 
in just two plays called by Wyoming. They have one remaining here in the half. Four minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And it has really been all Wyoming. UTEP has not been able to do much in terms of driving the ball. They have allowed Wyoming to take control of the momentum of this game. Two long drives. Well, it's time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to the players on these teams who have been singled out by their schools, coaching, and faculty for outstanding performance in the areas of team contribution, athletics, and citizenship. Today's game team leader winners are Pat Haggerty from Texas El Paso, Hegarty is a political science major from Buffalo, New York. And for the Cowboys of Wyoming, Randy Welniak. Randy's a business major from Ord, Nebraska. And Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. You mentioned that Toyota awards Pat Hegarty. Well, his political science major wants to go to law school and then maybe get into sports and entertainment law. Two fine young men leading their teams here today. Welniak now will face a third and goal of the four, and Wyoming only one of four in third down conversions. But they haven't had to convert many third downs because they've been, for the most part, making some big gains on first and second down. Trying to find somebody open. Tolbert chases him and knocks him out of bounds at about the three. Welniak slow in getting up. Big Tony Tolbert at 6'6", chased him out with a little help from Richie Wright. So now it's fourth down. Paul Roach making the decision on fourth down. And the clock is running. It took a lot of time here. And they may have to hurry to get the playoff as they go for it on fourth and goal from just outside the one. The option, Welling at touchdown. The Cowboys punch it in again with 4.43 to go in the half to lead, 23 to 3. He was recruited as an option quarterback. He shows you right here that he hasn't forgotten how to do it. He had Steve Benna as a trailing back. And now here's Sean Fleming to attempt yet another extra point. He not only makes them all, he makes them all right down the middle. 51 in a row. And a 24-3 Wyoming lead. Wyoming jumping out to another big first half lead as they look to go 10-0 and maintain that top 10 ranking. And as an indication of how well they have done early, that graphic with 255 points now in the first half tells the story. Clarence C.A. watches the ball go out of bounds. So a penalty flag goes up as Fleming's kick went out of bounds just inside the five of Utah. Out of bounds at the five yard line. Sean Fleming with three extra points and a field goal contributing to the fact that the Cowboys have broken their all-time single season scoring record here this afternoon as far as total points in a season are concerned. Well over 400 scored so far this year. So the penalty will move the ball back to the 35. Illegal procedure officially. Clarence C.A. and Kevin Caldwell. Again, the receivers for UTEP. Bob Stoll wants to get a good return, some field position, and some offense going. UTEP needs to get a touchdown before the end of the half to get back into the game. Fleming, a freshman. Booms another one, and Clarence C.A., about seven yards deep, will not return it. It'll be a touchback first and ten at the UTEP 20. The NFL on CBS returns tomorrow. Another great Sunday for you, beginning at 12.30 with the NFL today, and then a doubleheader day on CBS. In the first half of the doubleheader, many of you will see Dallas, and then it'll be the Rams, Philadelphia, Detroit at Minnesota, and then the 
second game highlighted by New Orleans against Washington. Or some of you will also see San Francisco against the Phoenix Cardinals. Be sure to check listings in your area for the game and time where you may be. Of course, Steve, I live in New York, so I'm close to the Giants. And boy, they struggled against Detroit last week before winning in overtime, 13-10. They got problems protecting Phil Simms. They'll be under the gun again tomorrow. Pat Haggerty under the gun here. Trying to find a receiver open, gets it away. It's incomplete. Intended for Ricky Lopez down the far sideline. And it'll be second down and 10. 4.35 to go in the half. Let's go down again to Leslie Bisser. I'm here with Wendy Willis, who uh, dates Randy Welniak. Wendy, he's having a great day, but you're a campus star in your own right. How do you juggle the schedule? We get to see each other about five minutes a day, if we're lucky. And But th that time is quality time, and it's true that absence really does make the heart grow fonder, I think. Okay, well, after this play, we'd like to see a little bit of what you do. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Well, Miss Wyoming certainly appropriate because she's out in this weather with very little on. She must be used to it. John Harvey with a reception out of the backfield, but not enough for the first down. Let's go back to Leslie. Okay, Wendy, we've seen Randy's arm today. Let's see yours. <laughs> that's great. Now that's entertainment, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admire her. Not only her talent, but her fortitude in this 40-degree windy weather. I was just about to say she's easily as talented as her boyfriend, Randy. <laughs> Miss Wyoming, also 1988. Third and three, Utah. From their own 27. Haggerty with good protection, incomplete. The pass was a little bit behind the intended receiver, tight end Arnie Atkinson. And Gaston Kozar was covering on the play. So it's fourth and three. The Miners unable to pick up the first down. And will have to give the ball away with 349 left to go in the half. Lance Brownlee now kicking into the wind. Freddie Doucette standing back near his 35. Brownlee with no pressure gets over a wobbly kick and Doucette watches it bounce out of bounds somewhere near the 45. They'll mark it at the 42 of Wyoming where the Cowboys will have first and ten. Steve Zabriskie, John Dockery, and Leslie Visser bringing you college football here on CBS. We're in Laramie, Wyoming, the high country. War Memorial Stadium, and the Cowboys with a 24-3 lead. Here's how it happened. Wyoming scoring first on an eight-yard pass from Welniak, and it was 7 to nothing. And then Dawson ripped off a 22-yard run for a 14 to nothing lead. UTEP with Chris Jackie's 32-yard field goal made it 14-3. Fleming with a 21-yard field goal and then Weldingak on a one-yard run. And it's 24-3 Wyoming. First and 10 Cowboys. Dabby Dawson breaking tackles and spinning away and getting outside the 45 before he's wrapped up by Jeb Mosley, number 95. Did that play look familiar to you? Remember the Washington counter trap that you still use it? Watch 71 and 68 pull to lead the play. See the big man? It's actually 73 and 71 pull. You see that in the pros a lot. Washington does it very well. What do they call it? The counter tray package. And the counter tray with 290 pound Steve Slay and 275 pound Mark Foos leading little Dabby Dawson. Need a little help there. Gain of five, second of five. Dawson this way. Again, he's got blockers, and he's to the UTEP 40 before he's knocked down there. Terry Walker, the strong safety, had to make yet another tackle in the secondary. First down, Wyoming in UTEP territory at the 39. Dabby Dawson waits for his blockers. His lead blocker, Fitchy, didn't do much that time, but still, Dabby slowed down. He waited, he waited. And even though Fitchy didn't throw a block, he still provided a screen for him to get some extra yards. Zabby's carried 10 times now for 110 yards and has gone over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. Three wide receivers in the game for Wyoming on first and 10 from the UTEP 39. Welniak with no backs. Throwing it deep. Incomplete. It was intended for Sean Wilkins, the wide receiver number 15. 
who was covered by his opposite number, O.T. Thomas, number 15. Clock stops with 2.27 remaining in the half. We just got word from the uh, Wyoming bench that their center, number 54, Grant Salisbury, is out for the game, having some knee problems. And he is perhaps their best all-around offensive lineman. He's the man who calls all their protections, too. So, you know, people sometimes take centers for granted. But there's Foose, number 73, in to make the calls and to take care of the uh, snapping chores. Foose, a junior out of Gehring, Nebraska. Second down and 10. Dabby Dawson. Again, has blockers near the first down before O.T. Thomas knocks him down at about the 29. Steve Benna, who was in at fullback, with a good block on the corner to spring Dabby Dawson. Steve, I made this point before, and I don't quite understand why Dabby is carrying that ball on his inside arm. Guards pull. Watch it. See it there? If he's carrying it in his left arm, the outside arm, he will have that inside arm free to use against the tacklers. I don't quite understand why he's doing that. Though he's doing well enough in what he's doing. Believe me, if you're averaging uh, you know, 10, 12 yards a carry, you're doing something right. Look at this. 11 for 119. And he picked up just enough for the first down at the 29 of Texas El Paso. He's certainly keeping pace with his buddy Barry Sanders over at Oklahoma State. They're playing Oklahoma today in Stillwater. He and Barry in a little bit of a competition to see who gets the most yards this season. As you mentioned earlier, Doc, they played against each other in high school and have remained very close. They did play together in grade school. They were on the same team. Can you imagine that team? Even back then, they were probably both pretty good. Fake to both Benna and Gunn. Well, the act incomplete. It was intended for Gilmore, but Ted couldn't hold on at about the 10 yard line. You know, it's really an interesting thing when you uh, think about Gilmore, and, and Welniak is uh, hobbling around a little bit. But Gilmore, the story of Gilmore, how he got to Wyoming. Apparently, Paul Roach and his staff went over to talk to Dabby Dawson. They were very interested in him. There was another guy sitting in the living room. They talked to Dabby, they left, and they said, well, who was that other guy in the living room? Turned out he was Ted Gilmore, and they said, wait a minute, we got to get a hold of him. We heard he's a very talented player, so you know, that's how Ted Gilmore found his way to Wyoming. And both Dabby and Gilmore from Wichita, Kansas. Second down and 10, still at the UTEP 29. Dawson straight ahead, stood up as he crosses the line of scrimmage and pushed back. A short gain, if any. And again, we'll go to the CBS Sports Wire and bring you up to date. Illinois just did beat Indiana. Most of the Big Ten games in the third quarter, except this one in the first quarter. And coming up at halftime, Jim Nance, Eric Parsegian in the studio, the Prudential College Football Halftime Report, all the scores and highlights. You have to figure Arrow will have a big smile on his face as undefeated Notre Dame continues to roll. <laughs> One minute left in the half as Welniak rolls, fires, and completes it at the 16-yard line to number 88, Freddie Doucette. He and Doucette have hooked up together for some big plays. That's Doucette's fifth reception. It's a gain of 16, gain of 12 yards. We'll go over the last four games, we talked about them averaging 45 overall, 55 over the last four games, and <laughs> this Wyoming offense, and 9-0, and they're unstoppable. And they're on track right now. 24 points already in the bag, and with 40 seconds left in the half, threatening again. First and 10 from the UTEP 16. Dawson cutting back, dragged down by Ken Sauline, who's had to make a lot of tackles, and is in fact the leading tackler for UTEP and a timeout called by Wyoming to stop the clock with 27 seconds left. So Welniak to the sideline and we'll take a timeout as well with 27 seconds left in the half and the Cowboys comfortably in front threatening again. Paul Roach and the Cowboys spending their final timeout here in the first half with 27 seconds left as they regroup and Bob Stahl is going to have to do a little regrouping at halftime with his team down by 21 and maybe even more before it's over here. You know it's interesting Bob Stahl when we talked to him said you know we have, we've turned things around at UTEP and we're doing well but until we beat some of the elite 
the BYUs and the Wyomings, we really can't take that next step. The rushing game has been overpowering with Dawson. 125 yards himself. Second and seven. Touchdown! Tom Kilpatrick, the tight end, with the reception in the end zone, and it's 30 to 3, Wyoming. They should call him Touchdown Tom Kilpatrick because he's a receiver that doesn't catch many balls, but he already had five touchdowns. This is number six, catches one on one of four catches. This is a perfect throw because there's no room. Gets his feet down, touchdown. Richie Wright was trying to defend against him, but could. John Fleming with yet another extra point. And it has been all Wyoming here in their home. 31 to 3 with 21 seconds remaining in the first half and let's take a look now at the University of Wyoming here in Laramie Cowboys are happy with a big lead here in the first half Clarence CA number four and Ricky Lopez number eight looking at Fleming's kick as it goes clear past the end line for the automatic touchback Tom Kilpatrick with the touchdown catch from Welniak for the 30th point of the game. <laughs> they are in great position. You can afford to smile at this point. Well, what does UTEP have to do now, Doc? They've got just 21 seconds left here. Steve, they have to go for something. I mean, you're down by this much. Anything that happens good to you before the half is certainly a lift. 31 to 3. You can't sit on the ball. Well, they've got a spread out formation with three wide receivers. Hegarty drops and fires and completes it to Harvey out of that field. And Harvey gets out of bounds just across the 25, stopping the clock with 15 seconds left. The and the tackle made by Steve McMillan, the right corner. It's a gain of six. It'll be second down and four, but it's somewhat immaterial right now. You'll see them load up on Reggie Barrett because it's number 86. Is the man that can go deep. He has the outstanding speed. The hands got four or five speed. And he's the man that can go downtown for the touchdown. Draw to Harvey. Making people miss. But it's not going to do a lot of good unless UTEP calls a quick timeout, and they do. Seven seconds remaining in the half. Well, while we have a timeout, let's take this moment for a message from the College Football Association. The Miners with just seven seconds remaining in the half. They picked up enough on the draw by Harvey for a first down, but may not have time for any more than one more play as they call timeout and had time to discuss what that might be. They have some real speed. Clarence C.A. is a 10 300 meter man, number four. I mentioned Reggie Barrett on the other side who also can run well and is a 6'2". Simply throw the ball up and hope for the best. Barrett comes left, C.A. goes right, and in the slot, number two, Kevin Caldwell. You tap at their own 34. for Barrett. Two men back for Wyoming, and they knock it down. Incomplete. Free safety, Daryl Harris. Coming with the coverage as time runs out, and that's the end of the first half. The Wyoming Cowboys doing what they have done all year, coming into the game undefeated and leading here at halftime over the University of Texas at El Paso, 31-3. The big play early in the game, a 22-yard touchdown run by Dabby Dawson, who has rushed for over 100 yards already here in the first half. That's the end of the first half with the score. Wyoming 31, UTEP 3. Jim Nance will be back with a college football report after this message and a word from your local station. The Prudential College Football Report has been sponsored by the Prudential. Your Prudential representative goes above and beyond to meet your needs in insurance and other financial services. The Prudential, your rock in financial services.
We're back in Laramie here at halftime. It's been all Wyoming when you look at the scoreboard, 31 to 3. But there are some statistics that really support that score on the scoreboard. Look at the time of possession. Over 21 minutes of the 30 in the first half, Wyoming controlled the football. And in doing so, they rolled up a significant amount of yardage. 168 yards in the first half, far above their season average. And look at the total offense numbers. 300 yards in the first half to just 100 for Texas El Paso. I think when you look at the time of possession, the field position that UTEP has been stuck with for the most part, maybe, Doc, we have yet to see the real minor offense. It's been total dominance. Pat Haggerty and his offense have not been able to get out of the blocks because, as you said, they let Wyoming get on top early and become dominant. And uh, they, got, they have some speed. They have some talent at the wide receiver, so they do have some comeback potential, but this is a good, uh, a good Wyoming team. You know, before the game, I think, Pat ha Haggerty in his comments may have been somewhat of a prophet. Let's listen. I think um, if we're going to keep the rush off of us, we're going to have to mix things up between the run and the pass, so they're not sure whether we're going to be passing the ball all the time because uh, that's what they've, they've gotten teams behind, and, and they know that they're going to have to pass so they can come after you as hard as they want. So if we're going to be able to keep the rush off of me, we're going to have to take quicker drops and uh, get the ball off a little quicker than the other teams will have. Then, uh, well, Pat Haggerty has felt that pressure. That's one of the reasons he hasn't been able to get on track, but they should get the ball to start the second half. They just have to do something with it. Exactly, and I think they have the capability. It's a question of whether a good Wyoming defense will be able to shut them down. They have to gamble. They have to take chances. Let's see what's happening. We'll be right back with more college football here on CBS after this message, as well as a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents college football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by New Extra Gold Draft in bottles and cans, the one with a full tilt taste. Mr. Goodwrench, no one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench, no one. And by UPS, we deliver to every address in the U.S. and to 41 countries worldwide. Ready to start the third quarter with Wyoming up big. And just moments ago, Leslie Visser talked with Wyoming coach Paul Roach. Coach, you totally dominated the first half. How were you able to capitalize? Well, I think, uh, number one, we were able to control the ball, and particularly in our first drive against the wind, uh, 80 yards, and then we came back uh, to go up 10, then 17, and uh, I think the control in the first half and then the margin that we're leading by uh, just puts us in tremendous position. To say the least, it puts him in tremendous position. Of course, he's undefeated at 9-0. and He's defending his WAC championship. He's looking down the road to the Holiday Bowl. But keep this in mind with regard to Bob Stull's Texas El Paso Miners. They have outscored their opponents 79-7 to in the third quarter. As the kick by Fleming again goes through the end zone. Ricky Lopez couldn't corral it, but didn't really need to. So it'll be first and 10 UTEP at the 20. And Pat Haggerty is going to get a chance to do what he wanted to do. Remember, his, Pat Haggerty started out at the Air Force, and really, he wanted to be a fighter pilot, but he had some eye problems. And also, he wanted to play football. He wanted to play quarterback. He wanted to play in a place where he could throw the ball. So he's going to get his chance right now. They give it to Harvey, and Harvey looking very tentative. His drop for about a one-yard loss at the 19. That is not the John Harvey that we're used to seeing. Steve Addison and Rich Miller... Combine on the stop, lost about a half a yard. So it'll be second down, about ten and a half to go. Megan Welniak do not compare very favorably throughout the first half. Welniak has had far more opportunities than has Hegarty. Ken wants to throw here and he's blitzed and dropped. Back around the 12 yard line, Mitch Donahue breaking through. We dropped Haggerty for a loss, and that's what Pat was saying about Wyoming getting ahead early and then being able to just tee off with the rush. Truthfully, this Wyoming defense is a far better defense than the UTEP defense, so Haggerty's job is much greater than Welniak's job there. He has no time to set up and throw. Donahue's in on him before he can even get uh, a chance to set up. 41 sacks. Third down, 18 yards to go. A draw play. Eddie Dixon goes nowhere. Addison wraps him up, and Craig Schutteen is right there. 
You know, I was just talking a little bit about uh, Mitch Dunning there. He has 41 tackles. That was his ninth sack of the year. And they say before he's through, he'll probably be the sack record holder here at Wyoming. Greg Schlichting with the big play that time. And Freddie Doucette drops back deep. As UTEP will have to punt it away, Lance Brownlee standing in his own end zone. He'll be kicking in with that brisk 25 to 30 mile an hour win, barefooted. And Doucette's going to let it roll, and it gets a good Texas El Paso roll. And it's going to roll dead around the 44 yard line. Well, college football will be back at you next Saturday here on CBS. Take a look at that eagle and that bulldog, and that'll tell you this is a Georgia-Auburn game. The War Eagles against Ugga and the boys. 2.30 Eastern time next Saturday right here on CBS. And, of course, we mentioned Auburn and their defense. Now they have four consecutive shutouts. If indeed, they did hold up with a shutout today, which I think they did. Wyoming first and ten at their own 43. The flag is thrown and whistle stop play. Dwayne Jones carried the ball, but the play was whistled dead before it began as there was some preliminary movement along the line of scrimmage. Illegal procedure against Wyoming, the preliminary indication from Tom Robinson. You know, you talk about that game, the Georgia at Auburn, the SEC so tight going into today. There were four teams tied. Now you see what happens. This includes ball, today. The legal procedure on the offense. Still first down. Georgia five and one. Auburn four and one. Alabama, LSU, Florida three and three. So that race stays tight. And next week, a critical game. Georgia at Auburn. Try to find out who's going to the Sugar Bowl. Penalty makes it first down and 15. Abby <laughs> Dawson. Looking for a seam and a penalty flag is thrown as the tackle is made just across the 40. And holding is the preliminary indication against Wyoming. So UTEP was unable to do anything on their first possession, and the Cowboys now are having a tough time getting on track here. As we listen for the call, sometimes you lose your concentration when you're ahead 31 to 3. It's hard to stay involved in the game. Holding on the offense. Still first down. The Cowboys are going the wrong way. It's still first down, but now the ball back inside the 30 at the 27. And it'll be first down and 25. Wyoming's last four possessions, all resulting in scores. An 80-yard drive and a 77-yard drive among them. It's a simple case of Wyoming being dominant and showing us why they average 45 points a game and almost 550 yards a game. This is a dynamic, sophisticated offense run by a very talented quarterback. Well, the act firing a slant into Gilmore. And Gilmore to the 45 before he's knocked down. And again, Terry Walker, the strong safety, had to make the tackle with help from Vernon Cook. And Gilmore is really the possession type of receiver, not great speed, only a five-game starter. Right here, he's wide open. Looks like a zone by UTEP. He gets in the dead spot and makes the reception. It's a 16-yard gain, so it'll be second down and eight. Wyoming right at their own 45. some pressure can't find anybody open and he has stopped and will be slow to get up as he ran head on into Doug Morgan at 225 pounds well the anchor bit shaken up in a situation like that if you're a quarterback discretion may be the better part of valor maybe a little slide into second base would make sense instead of taking a major hit right here Doug Morgan with his shoulder right into the head and shoulders of Welniak. Welniak bouncing out. He's third down and six as he gained two to the 47. Right back to throw under pressure. Tony Tolbert calls him down and Welniak sacked 
back inside the 40. Tony Tolbert at 6'3 and 230, built a lot more like a basketball player. Out of Inglewood, New Jersey, he gets the job done, however. It's interesting when UTEP was having their problems in basketball, they actually thought about bringing big Tony to uh, Tolbert off the football team to help the basketball team. Kind of a Ted Hendrick type of player. Lanky. Kilpatrick's punt with Bill Ross, number 16, back to receive it. Boomed inside to 10 to the 8-yard line. And Ross is hit at the 15. A 52-yard punt with that following win by Tom Kilpatrick. UTEP still not enjoying good field position and trailing 31-3. Wyoming head coach Paul Roach has said that the two most influential people on him in his coaching career have been Red Miller, the former Broncos coach, and John Madden, for whom Paul was an assistant coach for a number of years. And here's what recently John Madden had to say about his The thing about career. Paul is anyone can learn football. I mean, that's no, that's no big thing. I mean, you can learn plays, you can learn offenses, you can learn blocking combinations, pass patterns, and schemes. But you can't always learn how to get along with people and how to get people to play for you. And that's what Paul had. Paul Roach certainly has that, and so did John Madden. And interesting, Paul Roach told us that story about Madden being the meeting, able to separate the important from the unimportant. And I want to talk a little bit about that. First and 10, UTEP. Hegarty to throw quickly, but the intended receiver... Reggie Barrett slipped and fell, so his second attempt. We talked about Madden being able to separate what's important and what wasn't important, and being in a meeting at 2 a.m. in the morning trying to decide, you know, he was with all of the brass from the Raiders, trying to decide who the 40th man on the squad would be. He looked over at John Madden, and he was dozed off in the corner, falling asleep. So the next day on the field, Roach said to him, hey, John, you know, you missed part of the meeting, and John says, heck no, I'm only worried about the 22 guys they are going to play today. He didn't care who that 38th guy was. Hegarty rolling, trying to get away from that pressure, firing, and is it complete? No. Ricky Lopez with a great catch, but the officials say he did not come down inbounds, and he's one foot inbounds, so it's incomplete. And Hegarty now, 6 of 16 for 66 yards. This is actually a pretty good throw, but watch the receiver go up right there. And Lopez, one foot down. He got the foot down. Of course, three plays don't exist in college football. That's why Ricky Lopez was arguing, because he obviously did get the foot inbound, but they didn't get him. So it's third down and 10. The biggest flaw that Pat Harrigan has as a quarterback is his slow feet. And you saw him right there. He is so slow. They don't want him to run. And that's one of the things that uh, has caused a problem today. This is the second fumble by Hegarty. Remember on a snap earlier? This time he tries to spin. And then he takes a big hit right there by number 23, Eric Coleman. And Wyoming recovers. It might have been Steve McMillan who recovered the ball. But it's first and 10 Wyoming at the UTEP 20. 9.58 to go in the third, and the Cowboys still leading 31 to 3. Gilmore in motion. Jones, the fullback. And Dwayne Jones with a gain of three or four down near the 16. You know, UTEP is a team that doesn't turn the ball over that much. You mentioned coming into this game, they were a plus 17 in takeaway giveaway ratio. As a matter of fact, look at the NCAA turnover leaders. They were tied with Arkansas. A couple of times today, they've fumbled. Wyoming has recovered. But it really hasn't been the story of the game. It's simply been a dominant, more talented Wyoming team controlling the line of scrimmage, controlling the entire game. UTEP had only fumbled three times all year, and two of those were last week. Abby Dawson looking for that seam, but it closes quickly. Ken Sawley and Tony Tolbert combined to bring him down. And Dawson will be short of the first down by about three at the 13. It'll be third down. 
and Debbie, as he does often on third down, goes out. As Wyoming sends in an extra wide receiver, and again, we'll show you the CBS Sports Wire and bring you up to date. Cowboys leading big and threatening for more. Third and three at UTIP 13. Welniak fires incomplete. He overthrew the intended receiver, who was well covered. Tom killed Patrick. Richie Wright had the coverage, a strong safety. So it's fourth down and three, and the field goal unit comes on. John Fleming to attempt yet another one. Chris, make sure everybody's on side. Sean Wiggins does the holding for Fleming, and he'll mark this one right at the 20. Fleming already has kicked one, and on the year, 12 out of 20. A 30-yard attempt, and it's good. The cannon goes off, and the scoreboard goes up another notch. 34 to 3, Wyoming, with eight and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. There goes the Cowboy mascot, Cowboy Joe, and that pony has been busy today. He's getting his running in, but then I guess he's used to it by now, Doc. When you average 45 points a game, he is. He has to be in shape. 34 to 3 already. Fleming to kick off. The Cowboy Joe folks who run with him also have to be in shape, and Fleming's kickoff goes out of bounds again near the 5, and so it'll be brought back. Let's go down to Leslie Visser on the sideline. Well, Cowboy Joe, you figure he runs 300 yards per trip around. He'll probably be in the Olympic marathon trial before 92. Back to you, Steve. Uh, Leslie, all I want to know is, are you running with him? Uh, I'm waiting for him at the end. <laughs> Thanks. He looks like he's in good shape. I don't even see him breathing hard. Joe, it, Joe? What? <laughs> He likes that lens, though. He's got perfect weather conditions here today, huh? It's got the breeze has uh, calmed down. The snow is gone from last night. It's a beautiful afternoon for Wyoming fans, UTEP fans uh, watching back in El Paso, where it's what 75 degrees. Or Probably sunny. in the 80s. Yes. Well, the Wyoming fans are loving it, and they do have a great day. A lot better than the weather had been for the last few days. The breeze continues, but the sun is out. The snow is gone. And they're watching their Cowboys do their thing, as they have done just about all season long. Fleming keeps it inbounds this time. Clarence C.A. takes it at the goal line. Tries to get outside, and he stops at the 16-yard line. Great coverage by Wyoming. Let's go back to New York to Jim Nance for a college football update. Well, Steve, what an incredible start by Oklahoma freshman Mike Gaddis. In the first five minutes, he has five carries, 110 yards, and two touchdowns, including that 44-yard gallop, 14-0 Sooners after two possessions. Let's go back to Wyoming. Thanks, Jim. Those Sooners and the Cowboys have a lot in common. They can score often, early, and frequently. Boy, and Mike Gaddis is making an apron because I wonder what's going on with Barry Sanders. Not much, I guess. John Harvey takes the pitch, and again... Running tentatively, Harvey stopped for no gain, may have even lost a little bit at the 15-yard line. Vaughn Henderson, number 94, a junior out of Denver, made the tackle. You know, Bob Stull must be hoping for a miracle because John Harvey just is not doing it today. We, he pointed to his swollen right ankle when we talked to him yesterday and said, well, he's not at full speed. It's obvious he's not today and not doing anything. Perhaps it's time to look at someone else. I'm surprised we have not seen either Fuller or Menifee. And they both have been impressive, impressive in replacing Harvey. Schembeck right there in the pass. Called an incompletion, but could very well have been a lateral pass. It looked like it was thrown behind. It was a lateral pass. There was no doubt about it. So it's a good thing that it went out of bounds for UTEP, that is. Take a look at it again. He, the rush is on. He throws it right now. And you see the receiver is behind the quarterback. Therefore, it's a lateral and you got to think that John Harvey is hearing some footsteps. Didn't make much of an effort to catch that ball. Now, had that ball been ruled the lateral, it would have moved you kept back to the point where the ball went out of bounds. So apparently they ruled it an incomplete pass. It's third down and 10. Really about 11 yards to go near the 15. Haggerty under pressure gets struck, and the ball goes down as well. Haggerty retains possession, however. Back inside the 10-yard line as Craig Schlichte, number 92, along with number 49, Mitch Donahue, are in there once again. And 
that Cowboy defense has really kept Hegarty and the offense for UTEP bottled up. We talked a lot about the Cowboy offense, but their defense is outstanding as well. Coming into this game, they almost they had about five sacks a game, a total of 43. So this is a very fine defense. Lance Brownlee, as he has done quite often, putting out of his own end zone to Freddie Doucette, and he hangs a beauty. Doucette at the 49. And tackled as he gets into UTEP territory across the 45. A 42-yard punt by Brownlee into the win. But Wyoming back in business. Well, tomorrow it's the NFL on CBS, and it all begins at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today. Dallas and the Giants kick off the first game of a doubleheader. And in the first game of the doubleheader, some of you will also see the Rams against the Philadelphia Eagles. Others of you will see Detroit take on Minnesota. The second game of the doubleheader features New Orleans against the Washington Redskins. And some of you will see the 49ers take on the Phoenix Cardinals in game two. A big doubleheader on CBS tomorrow. I was there in Houston last Sunday night when the Redskins were embarrassed by a fired up Oilers team. I have to believe that Washington at RFK Stadium will come out fired up. You wouldn't think so. Gandy Dawson, the ball carrier for a short game of two or three. Tackled by Doug Morgan and Richie Wright. And speaking of Houston, not the Oilers, but the Cougars. Oh my what about goodness. this? 66 to 15. An embarrassment. Texas having their problem. And look at this, they're up next. Wyoming plays at Houston. And then their final game and conference game of the year will be at Hawaii. So Houston revving up for the unbeaten Cowboys next week in the Astrodome. Dawson coming this way. Making people miss inside the 40 to about the 37 before Terry Walker makes the stop. And you talk to Paul Roach about some of the goals that the Cowboys have for their team. Of them they're going to achieve from the looks of it today. They're going to win their second consecutive WAC championship. But he also talked about their ranking. They're ranked 10th in the country coming in today. Some of them are thinking, well, maybe we can be a little bit higher ranked, you know, if we beat a team like Houston. And certainly they're going to the Holiday Bowl. So a lot of the aspirations, a lot of the goals that the uh, Paul Roach and his staff and players have had are going to come true this year. Undefeated? I don't know. Tough game next week. And Hawaii, you know, always pretty tough in the Aloha State as well. Two tough ones remaining. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. They lead 34-13. It is third down and two yards to go. But now time has expired and a delay of game penalty will be called against Wyoming. Second time in the game, the Cowboys have taken too long. So it'll be third and seven. We're at Laramie, War Memorial Stadium, and a near sellout crowd watching the Cowboys. Steve Zabriskie, John Dockery, and Leslie Visser as Wyoming undefeated leads Texas El Paso 34 to three here in the third quarter. What this program has done. Look at what they've done over the last two seasons. 18 regular season wins conference wins 14 in a row interesting that paul roach has not lost a whack game 14 and 0 in the whack since he took over looking to go 15 and 0 today all those numbers will jump up one like the cowboys win this one by 41. third and seven well the act rolling throwing back and throwing long and it's complete scott gibson for the touchdown there is a penalty flag down, however, back near the line of scrimmage, as well as a shaken up cowboy. But sophomore Scott Gibson hauled in the pass and took it in. Well, the act took quite a hit after the pass, and that may be the penalty. We'll see what Tom Robinson says. We got roughing the passer against the defense. The touchdown's good. We'll mark the penalty on the kickoff. That is the case as well. The act has taken a lot of shots today, but the best way to answer back is to heave one for six points. When it's right, it's right. And that's what's happening for Wyoming today. Rolls out, and this is a big throwback play to Scott Gibson out of St. Louis. Sophomore, see him being covered right there. No chance by number Ken Salve, the linebacker was covering, and look at this reaction. Whoa. You'd think it was a lot closer than it is. 40 to 3 to score Wyoming on top of Utah. 
So here's Fleming again out of Wiggins' hold for yet another extra point. And again, he folks it right through his 53rd consecutive extra point this season without a miss. What a freshman kicker he has been, and what a team the Wyoming Cowboys are. The high country of Wyoming, near the nation's continental divide. And the Cowboy fans coming from far and wide, because there's a lot of far and wide around here. Miles and miles of nothing but miles and miles. Wyoming University, right here in this town of Laramie, of about 24, 25,000 people, and about 10,000 of those residents in attendance at the university. Following the penalty for roughing the kicker, Fleming kicks off from the 50, and this one might hit the scoreboard. I think it's good. Might have made it through the upright. So an automatic touchback. First and 10 at the 20. Back to New York for another update. Here's Jim Nance. Uh, Steve and Stillwater is shaping up as a shootout. Midway through the first quarter, Oklahoma State gets on the board as Mike Gundy finds his way to the end zone. 14-7 now. Sooner still in front. Let's go back to Steve and John. Thanks, Jim. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State. So known as the Cowboys coming back. So that big eight shootout. Quite a ball game so far. Right here, it's been all Wyoming, and UTEP really needs to do something with this possession. And Willie Fuller, number 26, is in the backfield, replacing John Harvey at tailback. Fake the Fuller. Heavy blasted as he throws the ball incomplete. And again, it was Craig Schlichting, number 92, and Hegarty is slow to get up. Hegarty will get up. We mentioned earlier that Hegarty was a guy who played with a broken jaw for a half against BYU last week. He is one tough character. Take a look at it right here. No one blocks Schlichting. He just comes in and makes it and then dumps him right on his shoulder and his head. Not intentionally. That's just the way he made the tackle. They're trying everything. Play action with everything they can to buy Hegarty some time. And nothing is working. Second down and ten. Under pressure again. He gets it off. But it's knocked down. And so is Hegarty. David Dean, right there. Uh, Haggerty having a tough day for the uh, junior college, former junior college All-American at Saddleback, Orange County, California Junior College. Look at this. Look at the day he's having. He's been sacked twice, nine hurries, knocked down six times. So you want to play quarterbacks, folks? Look at this. This is what can happen to you. Haggerty hasn't had an interception because he hasn't had time to throw one. <laughs> Under pressure again. Overthrows and almost picked off. The intended for Willie Fuller and Rich Miller. The safety almost came up with it. This is a defensive lineman dream when something like this has happened. You're hit 41 to 3. What do you have to worry about? All you do is put your wheels back and attack the quarterback. And that's exactly what Wyoming is doing to Hegarty here today. And this is what they have done all year. This is what Hegarty and the UTEP Miners were worried about. And this is what has happened again. Freddie Doucette back and Lance Brownlee has been very busy on the punt again. Plenty of time. The wind has really died down. He booms this one. Doucette back to the 35. He gets one block, but he's in trouble. A flag is thrown as the tackle is made at the 38 by Tom Costello, number 52. But there is a penalty flag down. Brownlee hit a 44-yarder into the wind. Lance Brownlee, a sophomore out of Garland, Texas. So Tom Robinson conferring with the officials, an illegal block on the run back called against Wyoming and it'll move the Cowboys back. Let's go down again to Leslie Visser on the sideline. Hi, I'm here with Red Miller, who once employed Paul Roach on his staff at Denver. Red, what are your memories of Paul? Well, uh, he, he has always had that unique knowledge, uh, the way to pick a defense apart, and he was on top of the game all the time. I think he might be the best college coach in America. And this might be one of the top five teams in America. I really believe that. John Madden says that he was born old. Is that true? Oh, no. Well, you might look at him and say that, but he's, he's young at heart, I'll tell you. He's a great man, a great coach. Well, at 61, he's got a great future. Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Leslie. Great to have Red here. And I know that 
Paul appreciates it as he and Red are pretty close. And you asked Paul Roach about his future, and he said, hey, at my age, the future is now. <laughs> Bobby Festus, the freshman out of Laverne, California, number seven, is in at quarterback for Wyoming. Peter Gunn, the ball carrier. Gunn breaks some tackles, picks up about three out to the 22 before Doug Morgan makes the stop. You know, Leslie talking to Red Miller on the sidelines, remember Paul Roach telling us how much he learned about the passing game from John Madden. He said Madden was the master of that game. As far as the running game was going, is concerned, he said Red Miller was the man who taught me most about that. This afternoon, both aspects of his offense are working. Well, that's really what has made the difference for Wyoming, is the balance they've been able to achieve between running and passing. Both have worked almost equally well, so they are extremely difficult to defend. So Bobby Prestis gets a shot here with Wyoming leading 41 to 3 in the third quarter. And the left-hander looking to throw for the first time will have to run. And he has a first down before he's bumped out of bounds. And again, it's Doug Morgan on the tackle. We're going to go out. He might as well go out in front of the coach so he can figure out what we're going to do next. Miami leading Tulsa in the second quarter. Not exactly dominant, though. Only 10-0. Colorado 45 to 8 over Missouri, fourth quarter. Kansas a winner. Nebraska big over Iowa State. UCLA 3-3 with Oregon halftime. The Ducks are playing them tough. First and 10 one moment. Their own 30. Peter Gunn with a block. But Tony Tolbert right there to fight his way through and make the tackle. So a good play by Tolbert to not only string it out but make the stop. Maybe a gain of one for Gunn. Whenever you say Peter Gunn, I expect to hear some music in the background from the old series. <laughs> Where's Henry Mancini, right? <laughs> Probably dating myself now. <laughs> well, there aren't too many guys around with the name, that's for sure. We should have asked him if he wanted to be a private investigator after he graduated. <laughs> The junior, 5'10", 200 pounds. There he is, 23 yards already on six rushes. He gained one. It's second and nine at the 31. Besk is in there as he went to throw the ball and came out. Was it an incomplete pass or a fumble? UTEP has it. It's a fumble recovered by Raymond Hill, the nose guard. And it did looks you like see? Larry Teal... Or Ross Purity it was who knocked the ball loose. And did you see what came on the field just as the play was being run? It looked like some kind of a rubber football out of the stands. And there, yeah, the ball comes loose as he's going to throw. I thought it was somebody's pad that sort of came out of the uniform. You know, sometimes a guy will have those elbow or shoulder elbow or uh, forearm pads. And they'll come off if somebody threw a rubber football on the field. Cowboys with a much-needed break, and Hegarty to throw on first down, has some time, and he runs out of it again. Brought down at the 25, Pat Raybould in there to get him. So even when Hegarty on a few occasions has had time, he hasn't found anybody open. Well, it's a new attendance record for War Memorial Stadium this afternoon. The largest crowd ever to see Wyoming here, 32,210. It breaks the old record set last year of 31,742 against BYU. They come out to support their Cowboys in record fashion. They're going to draw play up to Menifee on second down, and Menifee goes nowhere. Nothing is working for the Miners. And you mentioned the attendance being record here today. Not since the days of Jim Kick. Remember Jim Kick back in the mid and late 60s? What a great team they had then. But it hasn't been since then that they've had this kind of a club here at Wyoming. And people do appreciate it. They've come out and have, and have supported the Cowboys to the tune of about 20, 22,000 a game. So get 32,000. Really does mean something. Third down, 15. Intended for Lopez and incomplete. They tried the quick slant, so it'll be fourth down and 15. And we'll go back to New York for another college football update with Jim Nance. Well, Steve, three Oklahoma possessions, three touchdowns. This time it's Leon Perry for the Sooners. Two minutes left in the first quarter, 21 7. Back to Steve. Boy, thanks, Jimmy. Those guys are unbelievable, aren't they? They're up to 
a flying start. And you have to think that showdown in a couple of weeks with Nebraska is going to be a good one. That one's in Norman as well. Chris Jackie, 17 of 19, now 18 of 20 in the field goal department. Boots yet another one. A 44-yard field goal into the wind for Chris Jackie, a senior from Richardson, Texas. He's now hit 19 of 21 this year. He has got some kind of leg to pick a 44-yarder into the wind today. Of course, his longest, 56 yards. So all UTEP's been able to manage are two field goals by Jackie. And it is 41 to 6. One minute, 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Cowboys in complete command. And I don't know, it's kind of good news, bad news. Wyoming finally gives up the football. UTEP gets a break deep in the territory. They can't drive it in. They can't even really get a first down, but at least they get a field goal. The frustration really has to continue. Had they been able to take that in, Doc, maybe... Maybe they would have gotten something going, but they just haven't been. It's, all, it's been a dominant uh, Wyoming squad. We knew they were more talented coming into the game. We didn't think they would be this dominant. We thought UTEP would be able to play with them, though UTEP did have their reservations. Peter Gunn and Ted Gilmore are back to receive Chris Jackie's kick. UTEP, total yardage in the third quarter, minus 16. Gilmore takes it at about the two. Across the 20, to about the 26, or 22, rather. Troy Reppet and Reggie Rockamore make the tackle. Well, how about let's go back to 1956 a long time ago. UTEP was 8-1 and one that year. <laughs> Ike was elected to his second term. Look at the new Corvette. Huh? A loaf of bread, 15. Wait a minute. Were you in the fourth grade? <laughs> How many years did you spend in the fourth grade? All of three or four. <laughs> You've heard the term fifth-year senior? I was a senior for five years. You know, 56 was a great year for me and also for the Biters, I guess. I wasn't aware of it at the time. On first down, Peter Gunn. Trying to get outside, he's hauled down at about the 24. And Wyoming would get another quarterback as Tom Karansas is in there now, a freshman from Great Falls, Montana. Quite often what Paul Roach will do when he takes his starting quarterback, Welniak, out is he will alternate quarterbacks. He's not doing that now, he's alternating them more on series. But sometimes he's been known to alternate Karansas and Feskus on each individual play. A chance to get them some experience. I mean, uh, Randy Wilniak's going to be gone next year. He's going to need someone to lead his team. Fake to Ben on second down. And a completed pass near the 30, about the 27-yard line. John Brzee, the tight end, hauls it in. And there's Randy Wilniak on the sideline. And what a day he's had. Look at that. Three TD. Oh, yeah. Great pass. And what a season he's had. You know, it's interesting, he's actually graduated from college, and uh, he's in graduate school now, but look at where he stands in the NCAA leader's total offense. Pretty good company he's with there, fourth. Nearly 300 yards per game of total offense. And how many guys, when they graduate, stay around and play? He's, going, he's in an NBA program, but I think the fact that he had the rotator cuff surgery and really didn't have a chance to play had a lot to do with that decision. Time is expired. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of Wyoming 41 and UTEP 6. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local state. CBS Sports presents College Football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. Fourth quarter football in Laramie, Wyoming, and it's all Cowboys today as they are a big leg up on keeping their unbeaten string alive. Longest current in the nation. If they win today, it'll be 19 in a row. They have a third and three. They're on 28. Incomplete, intended for Gordy Wood. Tom Carranza is the third quarterback of the afternoon for Wyoming. 
So it'll be fourth down and three, and the kicking team comes on. You mentioned that streak 19 in a row. It will be regular season win streak. They had a little problem in the Holiday Bowl last year. They lost by one point there. It looks like they're going back to the Holiday Bowl this year. Tom Kilpatrick on. He'll now be punting into the wind, but it has died down significantly. And Vernon Cooks is back in single safety near his own 40. Boy, a beauty. I mean a beauty. Cooks won't even be able to catch up to it. He gets it around the 12. And not much running room. But he does a good job to get back out to the 18 where Pete Gozar makes the tackle. A 59-yard punt by Kilpatrick, who also plays tight end. What a boomer. When you get that ball to go up and the end turns over, you know you've got a great punt. After a return of seven yards. A 59-yarder into the win. So UTEP's problems continue. They've got the ball. But again, they do not enjoy good field position at their own 18. Scooter Menifee, number three in the backfield behind Eddie Dixon. forward out near the 25 he picked up about six Daryl Harris made the stop let's go back to New York and Jim Nance for yet another college football update well Steve this note from the mid-american conference with central Michigan today beating Ohio that Chippewa victory eliminated Ohio in the Mac and made this game for the rep to the California Bowl and Western Michigan wins it the Broncos are headed to the California Bowl let's go back now to Stephen John Thanks, Jim. Second down, four yards to go. It's a self pass over. Quick pitch to Eddie Dixon. And Dixon close to the first down, but looks to be about a yard short. Eric Coleman came up quickly from the corner to support, and Pat Raybould was there as well. Of course, we talked about Wyoming being the 10th ranked team in the country, and obviously. Paul Roach and his staff believe maybe they'll move up as you look at the top rankings here. Notre Dame winner today, Southern Cal. Miami of Florida, West Virginia, Florida State was the top five coming into today. Wyoming there, number 10, UCLA, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Auburn, and Wyoming, top 10 teams. Wyoming secretly would like to be in the top five before the season's over. They're afraid to mention it, but they'd like to get like. In and out of the hands of Willie Fuller. Fuller couldn't hold on, and Pat Haggerty's day has just been a nightmare. Even when he's had time, he hasn't been able to get a completion. He's Not now completed 6 of 21. He's 0 for 8 in this half. Not all his fault. That ball was certainly catchable. The offensive line should be sued for non-support. He's getting absolutely no time. See, it has picked up. <laughs> There's Freddie Doucette and Brownlee on again to punt. He has the wind in his back. He hits a pretty good one. Doucet takes it at the 29. Looking for an opening. And he'll get about five yards up to about the 34. A 44-yard punt by Brownlee. 13-11 remain in the ball game. And the Cowboys continue to roll. Randy Welniak yesterday in talking to us expressed the feelings of many of the team when Paul Roach was announced as head coach. A little surprised. And you know, we didn't realize how much ex um, coaching experience he had prior to this. And, uh, you know, from that point on, he got all his coaches together. And uh, it just seems so much more organized, you know, than in the past with uh, Kincaid and Erickson. And like I said, we've been fortunate to have him and his coaching staff working for us. Of course, Steve Erickson went suddenly up to Washington State, had everything shipped up there, Dennis Erickson did, and it was a shock to Wyoming and Paul Roach. He actually went into the trustees with an assistant coach, and they said, well, if we're going to hire someone, we want you to do it. He went back to his players who were initially shocked and then very happy. Hand off to Scott Gibson, and Gibson running hard runs over somebody and gets out to about the 39. And, you know, you talk to Paul Roach, and he says, you know, at my age, at 61, I can get away with things. Like the story he told us about taking six foot seven, 290-pound offensive tackle Steve Slay into the training room and cutting his hair because he has a haircut policy here. <laughs> we asked him if Slay objected. He said, fortunately, only verbally. <laughs> Not physically. That's right. That's six, seven, and 290, it would have been a mismatch. Second down and five. 
Runs is looking to throw over the middle and completes it. And again, out of the backfield, it's Scott Gibson, who caught a touchdown pass earlier and has a first down for Wyoming near midfield. Back to the CBS Sports Wire as we continue to update you on what else is happening in the fourth quarter. LSU and Alabama just by one for the Tigers. Southwest Conference. Now the Pac-10. Tight one with Washington and Arizona. Tom Karantzis, freshman from Great Falls, Montana. Getting some experience. First and 10 at the 49. Short yardage. Scott Gibson again, the ball carrier. You know, we talked about the success of the uh, Cowboys program in Paul Roach. I was amazed when we were talking to him the other day. Didn't really have time on Thursday evening to spend much time with us because he was at with meetings all day with his coaches, and then he went to practice. And after that, what did he do? He jumped on a plane to go on a recruiting trip. I'll tell you what, he has a lot of energy, and he needs it. At 61 years old, the thing that I think he's impressed upon the players is age doesn't make any difference. Enthusiasm, ability, and other things count. And the age is no factor any longer. Steve Bennett, the ball carrier, picking his way beautifully. And inside the 35. The Cowboys just keep running him in there. Terry Walker, the strong safety, had to make the tackle along with Richie Wright. Bennett, who's been hurt, coming back and doing well. And credit that offensive line. They've been just making holes all day long for the running game, which has been surprisingly productive for Wyoming. They've been improving the running game week in and week out. This afternoon, the running game has really been the dominant part of their offense. They have shown a great deal of depth that they have just kept running players in there and have continued to have success. From the 34, it's another first down for the Cowboys. And again, it's Bennett. Tripped up as he crosses the 30-yard line by Richie Wright. And Wright and Walker, the two safeties, are having to make the bulk of the tackles for Utah. That is not a good sign. A record crowd here at War Memorial Stadium. They have turned out to support their Cowboys here on national TV. They have been really excited about this game being on CBS, and they're showing their approval as is the football team. What startled me as we watched this play was that UTEP has never been on national television. Hard to believe with some of the teams they had back in the past, but there wasn't the coverage that there is nowadays. As Bennett carries and Evans makes the tackle. War Memorial Stadium here in Laramie, Wyoming. Steve Zabriskie, John Dockery, and Leslie Visser. And our folks from CBS bringing you college football today. Wyoming 41 to 6. And what a day has it, been, it has been for the Cowboys as they jumped out quickly. Do set for the pass. Then Dawson, a 22-yard run. And they were up 14 to nothing before Chris Jackie kicked a 42-yard field goal for UTEP. Then it was back on offense for the Cowboys. Fleming, a 21-yard field goal. Welniak ran the option for a one-yard touchdown. Kilpatrick caught a 12-yard pass from Welniak for another score. And then Fleming kicked a 30-yard field goal. At that point, it was 34 to 3, a 42-yard pass with Scott Gibson. And then Jackie's second field goal of the game made it 41 to 6. Wyoming. It's quite a mouthful. <laughs> I'm telling you, we got to have an extra quarter to run down scoring. 10-19 to go in the fourth. The penalty, Wyoming, moves the ball back to the 39. And Garantzis can't find anybody open. Now he's going to run. And he gets inside the 35 to about the 34 before Jeb Mosley, or Mosley, rather, and Tony Tolbert make the tackle. It's a long afternoon for Bob Stull. He's done so much with this UTEP program. A couple of decades of disaster now in his third year. He's turned that program around. They're not able to take that next step, though. They haven't been able to beat the BYUs in the Wyoming. And when you consider that they came into this game averaging 37 points a game, one record, and 436 yards of offense, a lot of cr credit has to be given to the Wyoming defense. It's a question of whether it's offensive uh, frustration, inability on the part of UTEP or good defense by Wyoming, some of both. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Ross Purity, who got up to get Durant's pass for the incompletion. A reminder that the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College Football Camp, we will select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. 
Bob Stoll has done such a great job of turning the program around. I think you're right, Doc. There is one more step to take. And what he's done in just three years leads you to believe that he's going to make that step. Fleming with another field goal attempt. This one, 52 yards, and it's good. Everything's going right for the Cowboys. A 52-yarder to make it 44 to 6 with 9.23 left to play. And they're loving it here in Laramie. Moments ago, a Herculean kick by Sean Fleming. 52-yard field goal, a career record for the freshman. And you know what? He loved it. His previous long was 48. And, Steve, that had another 10 yards to go. It might have been good from 60. And that was against the wind, you might add. He's amazing. He should have a great career. He's got 53 extra points in a row. And his field goals have been outstanding. CA stopped inside the 15. Everything has been going right for Wyoming, including kick coverage, as UTEP has never been able to enjoy good field position with the exception of a turnover. Lee Carter down there to make the hit on CA. So it'll be first and 10 UTEP as they mark it at the 13. 9-17 to go in the game. Miami now leading Tulsa 17 to nothing. Nebraska big, Arkansas big, and Syracuse. Scooter Menifee hauled down in the backfield. Mitch Donahue, 245 pound sophomore out of Billings, has had a great day. Caught him from behind. Donahue has the ability to read the tackle when he pulls and get right on his rear end and follow the play. And he also has the speed and quickness to make the play from the backside. Donahue comes off after the loss of three, getting Menifee in the backfield. It's second down and 13. UTEP at their own 11. Take the puller and a bootleg by Hegarty. Still can't find anybody open, and he's hauled down from behind. Chased down by Eric Warden, a freshman defensive end from Loveland, Colorado. It's more a commentary on the lack of foot speed by Hegarty rather than the speed of Eric Warden. He's just not quick enough. And when you play quarterback these days, you really have to be able to scramble because the defensive lines and the defenses have gotten so much better that mobility is essential. And look at Warden come from behind to make the tackle. That run by Hegarty, however, the best offensive game this half for Utah. But they still face third and three at the 21. Hegarty under pressure again, has to run again. He gets the first down, but pays the price as he gets near the 30. Sandwiched. Travels to the 28. Market at the 28, where it'll be first and 10 Utah. Impressed all day long by the Wyoming defense, the coordination of the rush, which you'll see coming, as well as the coverage downfield. He had a moment there to look downfield, but the coverage was so tight he had to tuck the ball in and take off. That is the first first down of the second half for Texas El Paso. Eight minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the game. Scooter Menifee. Trying to find a hole. And really, Eric Gordon made the play, but Gaston Kozar did a great job. He got turned around on the play, but he backed up into the hole, sort of feeling where the runner was coming from, and jammed the hole up even though he was facing the wrong way. And did you see Pat Hegarty's eyes that moment like, wow, is this one long afternoon, and will it ever end? They certainly did not expect this. Made the trip up from El Paso yesterday. They trailed 44 to 6. Fake to Menifee. Integrity to throw complete to Buller. And Buller hit immediately. Steve McMillan, the right corner, drops Buller at about the 32. Let's go down to Leslie Visser. Steve, I'm here with John Reed, the executive director of the Holiday Bowl. It appears that Wyoming's easily on their way to a second straight. What kind of a matchup would you like? Well, we're thrilled to do 
thrilled to death to have the Cowboys coming back. They're the third leading scoring team in the nation, as they demonstrate today. They're a very, very exciting team, exactly the type of team you like to have in a bowl game. We hope we can find one equal to them that'll provide a great matchup. If they were to stay undefeated, is there any way you could sweeten the pot and get a higher matchup? Well, we'd love to do that. It's a little late in the game to do that, but uh, we think we'll have one of the best games in the country regardless. Well, that's terrific. Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Leslie. The pass incomplete, intended for Clarence C.A. Eric Coleman, whom the pros are looking hard at, had the coverage, so it's fourth down and six. We know Wyoming is going to the Holiday Bowl. You look at some of the other bowls, and, uh, you know, you're looking at the PSD figure, Notre Dame and West Virginia have to be uh, the favorites to go there. The Orange, well, Miami, and maybe against Nebraska-Oklahoma, the winner, you know, the loser of that game. Junior Melvin Wells back to receive Brownlee's eighth punt of the afternoon. This one with the win, bounds out of bounds, inside the 25. So it was 6.36 to, re to go here in the ball game, and the Cowboys leading 44 to 6. We'll be right back to Laramie after this. The game winding down, and the Cowboys headed to the Holiday Bowl. But tonight on CBS, further entertainment for your pleasure. Dirty Dancing will be on, followed by the premiere of Raising Miranda. Then it's Simon and Simon and West 57. Tonight on the CBS News Magazine, Meredith Vieira investigates a self-ordained minister whose Seattle church, according to ex-members, has turned into a cult. That's tonight at 10 Eastern, 9 Central on CBS. West 57 capping off tonight's lineup. Cowboys first and 10 at their own 23. 6.36 to go in the game. Scott Gibson tripped up, and he almost broke it as he hurdles across the 35. Terry Walker, who's made a ton of tackles, tripped him up. Dejection on the bench over uh, UTEP bench. This is not what they expected. You come in here averaging 37 points a game. You hold your opponent to 17. And what happens? A blowout, 44 to 6. Who would have believed it? Wyoming believes it, because they've had one super day. They'll remain undefeated. And who knows? Maybe they'll move up in the rankings. First and 10 from the 36. And it's complete to Melvin Wells. As Bobby Crescas, the left-hander, fired it in there to the junior Wells. And it's another Cowboy first down. You know, Steve, we were talking about the bowls a few moments ago, and I want to correct myself in the Orange Bowl. It looks like as things shape up and you speculate, Miami will be a good shot there. And the winner of that Nebraska-Oklahoma game, of course, the Big 8 winner, goes to the Orange Bowl. I think I may have said it differently. Well, if that's the case, whoever Nebraska or Oklahoma wins it, that would be one heck of a ball game. Absolutely. Not much for UTEP to do, but be alone with their own thoughts as Mark Timmer carries and hurdles players further into UTEP territory across the 45. And as we look at some of the other bowls, you have to look at the Rose Bowl and the uh, showdown between USC and UCLA will decide who goes there, probably against Michigan. Cotton Bowl shaping up as maybe Florida State versus Arkansas. Citrus, well, Clemson, maybe North Carolina State against we don't know yet. The ever-popular undecided. All right. The total offense, Wyoming with over 350 yards on the day, or over 450 yards, I should say. Jay Daffer in there at fullback carries the ball. Daffer the headhunter on the special team. And the one ball we haven't really talked about, the Sugar Bowl, it appears to be Auburn LSU, one of those teams, versus the uh, USC-UCLA loser, most likely. So great matchups shaping up as Dapper carries for the 25th first down of the day for the Cowboys. Five minutes remaining in the ball game and a very quiet and sullen UTEP bench. Wyoming at the UTEP 39. And a handoff to Scott Gibson. And Gibson gets outside and hurdles for about 10 more down to the 30, a gain of nine. A sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, has been very impressive. You know, Wyoming, we talked about it earlier, has that balanced attack. When you look at it statistically, they almost run 50% of the time and throw 50% of the time. It's just a little off, as you see right there. And you look at some of the other years and some of the other leaders in other years, 
and balanced attacks really haven't done it. Look at Oklahoma in 87. 86% of the time they ran. And San, San Jose State, you before 65% throw. And, of course, BYU, two years, heavily favored the passing attack as they still do. So all coaches Mark seem to... the ball carrier, pardon me. Excuse me, I was going to say, all coaches seem to want that balanced attack, but it hasn't always proven to be the best. My feeling is you have to do something really well to put points on the board. Whether it's run the ball the way the Oklahomas do, or whether it's throw the ball the way the Miamis do. Well, that's a tribute to Paul Roach and the Miami, or the Miami, the Wyoming coaching staff and the players because they have been able to achieve that balance that everybody talks about and is yet so elusive. Another first down. And again, it's Jay Dapper running hard. Sophomore from Nebraska City, Nebraska. And they hammer it farther into UTEP territory. Back to New York and Jim Nance for another update. Well, Steve, Heisman Trophy candidate Barry Sanders has finally been heard from. Here he gallops 67 yards. He's over 100 for the game. It set up a Hartley Dykes touchdown reception, and now the Sooners' lead is trimmed to seven. Let's go back to Wyoming. Thanks, Jim. Barry Sanders, a great runner, but not too often do you see anybody rip off a 67-yard run against the speed of Oklahoma. There's just so much speed on that team, it's tough to get the long game. We have a player down on the field, UTEP player. That's the reason for the stoppage of play with 324 left to go in the game. And, you know, you mentioned that Heisman race, that Heisman hunt, and I'd say you'd have to consider Troy Aikman to be the favorite at the moment, but I don't see how you can count out Rodney Peter, Barry Sanders, or even Steve Walsh from Miami. But at this moment, you know, Heisman's are usually won early, and Aikman certainly had the, the early lead the way Tim Brown did a year ago. And a lot of the Heisman has to do with what you also did the year before, because it really takes two good years to win a Heisman Trophy. Very few guys have ever come along and burst on the scene won the trophy their first year. Jeb Mosley is the injured player, a senior at 270 pounder out of Houston, who will be attended from the field apparently with a leg injury of some sort. And there was some question whether, as you see him dragging that left leg, whether Jed Mosley was gonna play today. He hurt his elbow Wednesday in practice. But obviously he's played and uh, now another tough break for Jeb Mosley. I guess you could say that's adding injury to insult, the way today has gone for UTEP. With a 44-6 lead in Wyoming, having the football and 324 left to go. Next Saturday on CBS Sports, the War Eagles and the Bulldogs will square off the Georgia Auburn Southeast Conference matchup. You know what I like about this game? I like offense. I like the runners, Rodney Hampton and Tim Worley for Georgia against a stingy Auburn defense. Bobby Fesk is back in there at quarterback for Wyoming. And a handoff to Timmer. And Mark Timmer running hard. It's down near the 10-yard line. Before he is hauled down by Mike Stubblefield and O.T. Thomas. You know, Georgia was a winner today over Florida. And Auburn a winner over Southern Miss. And you look at the SEC standings. And you realize how important that game next week is going to be. Five and one, five and one. When that game goes to the Sugar Bowl. And Superdome. Louisiana, winner of the conference, which probably will be the winner of that game, possibly anyway. There really are still four teams in the home. Still battling. First and ten, Wyoming. And again, it's Scott Gibson who's shown great running ability, but there's Terry Walker. A flag is down, however, on the play. What a game Walker has played. He's made a lot of tackles, and he's had to, because the Wyoming running back spent a lot of time in the secondary of Texas El Paso. You talk about that tight, tight SEC race, and you saw the standings there before. Four game, four teams were tied going into today. Of course, it's falling out a little bit after today. Notre Dame, a big winner. West Virginia, still rolling up points. Major Harris, of course. UCLA, Oregon, that's a bit of a surprise. Third quarter, 3-3. Three, three. And UCLA's Rose Bowl hope certainly would take a crashing hurt if they lost that game. Still first down. You heard Tom Robinson, illegal motion against Wyoming. Still first down, but the five-yard penalty moves the ball back to the 15. It is possible for Wyoming to get a first down inside the one, at about the one-foot line. They are just outside the 15. 
Well, it started off as a bright day for the miners, even though it's a little cooler here than it is down home where they came from in the Valley of the Sun. But it has not been a sunny day outside of the actual weather. Held for a touchdown, the, without a touchdown for the first game so far this season, if this holds up. Fake to Dapper. Fesk is looking and completes it for a touchdown to Melvin Wells. Bobby Prescott, the left-handed freshman, fires a touchdown pass to Elvin Wells, and it's 50 to 6. The question may arise in some people's mind, is Paul Roach running the score up against UTEP? It's 50 to 6 now, as you mentioned. Here's his problem. He's trying to get his young quarterback, the redshirt freshman, Prescott, some playing time, some quality playing time, and letting him do what he can do. So he's not necessarily trying, he's trying to balance those two things. He doesn't want to run it up, but yet he wants his players, his backups, to be able to play. And there's Sean Fleming with another extra point with 2.09 left to go in the game. You can't send the second and third team into a game and tell them not to score. You can't tell any player, send them into the game and tell them not to compete. And you get a sense of poise from Prescott. Nice left-handed touch, completion, for the touchdown, number three, that's Melvin Wells. So, Cowboy Joe, the pony, makes a round again. Cowboy Joe is going to need a resuscitator after this game. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he's used to it. Because the Cowboys have scored 51 points above their 46-point average. And it, they will repeat as WAC champions. They will go to the Holiday Bowl. And they are still undefeated. And they will be ranked in the top ten. One thing about the Cowboys remaining undefeated is it's going to be tough for them to move up because the teams ahead of them are all winning as well. Bob Stull, obviously a long afternoon for this man who has done so much for the UTEP program. Clarence C.A. and Ricky Lopez back there, and it's Lopez who has it. And again, Wyoming holds him inside the 20. That's the goal of every kick coverage team, and Wyoming has been excellent at keeping UTEP from returning anything past the 20 yard line. Peter Gunn having a good time on the sideline as Melvin Wells caught a 15 yard pass to culminate a 10 play, 77 yard drive. Paul Roach has really put it together here. At the same time, Bob Stull has started what might be a complete turnaround at Texas El Paso. So these two teams may meet again with the WAC championship on the line. Scooter Menifee has a lead blocker. Willie Fuller, but Fuller couldn't get anybody, and the hole closed quickly. But a big game for Menifee before Lee Carter made the tackle. A meaningless long game late. Uh, long gain or late in the game. And let me ask you a question. See, this is an impossible trivia question. The last time Paul Roach was a head coach was 1955 Dickerson, North Dakota High School. A man who thought he would never get a chance to be a head coach. Thought time had passed him by. And here he is with the longest regular season winning streak in the nation currently. Scooter Menifee again going the other way. And he's tackled right at the 40-yard line. Tripped up by George Dozier, the strong safety out of La Mesa, California. And everyone seems to have a fondness and an affection for Paul Roach. I'm going to be out doing the Raiders uh, Chargers game tomorrow night on CBS radio. And I talked to the Raiders and they said, wait, you mean you're doing our man Paul Roach's game? And there's a real sense of, of good feelings from, from every place that Paul Roach has been. And you really get that from his players here at Wyoming currently. Willie Fuller on a quick opener straight up the middle. Busted for the first down out to the 45. Fuller's first carry of the day. So you see the clock stop for the chains to be reset with one minute and three seconds left. Wyoming congratulating each other. They have enjoyed quite a day and of course quite a season. With two games remaining, they will be at Houston next Saturday and the following Saturday at Hawaii for their final WAC and regular season game of the year. And if he again, student body right, gets into Wyoming territory at the 40 before Robert Midget brings him down. 
and UTEP uh, will play San Diego State at home, and then they have a tough one against Air Force, that game also in El Paso. Just 38 seconds as the clock continues to run. UTEP trying to do something here at the end of the ball game. Hagerty with a pitch to Menifee's student body left. Cutting back, but to no avail as it gets just a couple before Trent Greener, number 78, a senior from New Albany, Indiana, makes the stop. And the clock continues to run, now down to 14-13. And the Wyoming fans on their feet as most of them remain. And they are, in fact, once again, bowl bound. Now, Wyoming players started to go on the field, and UTEP called a timeout with 10 seconds left. I've been places where players have come on the field, like last week in West Virginia. So we'll take a timeout with 10 seconds left in the game. We'll be back for that final 10 seconds in just a minute. 